Welcome to the World Series of Board Gaming's coverage on the 2023 Ring Final of Wingspan. My name is Chris George, and I am joined by the 2022 Wingspan champion, Jeff Harden. Thanks so much for joining us, Jeff. I'm excited to get into the game. Yeah, me too. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. I got knocked out in round one this year, so it's uh, exciting to see uh, better, uh, you know, better Wingspan players this year who had a little better luck. Wow. Round one, eh? Well, you know, stuff happens. You That's know, true. Uh, viewers might also recognize Jeff from the final table of Great Western Trail. If you haven't seen that game, go check it out. It's uh, pretty fantastic. Jeff, you made, you've now made three final tables over two years. That's pretty impressive. I have, yeah. It's uh, it's starting to be an inside joke with my friends that I keep <laughs> making the Great Western Trail final and not actually winning it, but uh, we'll get there. There's always next year. There's always next year, and if you out there want to come in, compete, knock Jeff out in the first round of Wingspan next year, you've got a chance. Uh, you, <laughs> you can you can get your tickets now uh, with this special promo that I'm going to play right now. You could win your share of $100,000 in cash and prizes just for playing board games. The World Series of Board Gaming is back and bigger than ever. High-level play, friendly competition, national championships, there's no other event of its kind. Are you the next big name in board gaming? Get your tickets now at WSBGVegas.com and use the code IMN to save yourself up to 50 bucks. What are you waiting for? It's time to get in the game. So yeah, make sure to get your tickets. That promo expires April 1st. That's the best deal that you're going to get. Uh, and get your tickets. It's a fun event. Jeff, would you recommend people come to this event? Yeah, I definitely would. I mean, I go to a lot of uh, conventions for board gaming, obviously. Um, and this is, it's just a great time because everyone really takes it seriously, really cares and plays at a high level. You don't get that at every event, um, you know, really testing yourself and testing the skills that you've gained over the years. So I think it's, um, it's one of a kind kind of an event. So it's yeah. great. That's great. That's great to hear. But it's also it's also so lovely for me to watch it back because I get to see players like you who are always friendly at the table, regardless of what's happening. Uh, I, I feel like your attitude is, is generally mirrored uh, a lot throughout throughout the event. And it's just really lovely to see like friendly people who give it give it their all on the table and then off the table, you know, are just nice, genuine, great people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it's great to have you here. Uh, let's turn it over to the Wingspan table. Uh, apologies to two of our finalists. Uh, one of the cameras short-circuited out, but we're still going to give you all the Wingspan action. we got the top one going down, so let's turn over there right now. Need a flip? All right, so um, ground rules. Use the mats. Pay very close attention to um, if you have a used thing on a, on a board. Make sure you take it off during your turn. Um, Make sure you are completely done with your turn. Make sure you can take an, an actual turn based on where your um, your player marker goes. Um, if you make an illegal move, like you say, I want to play a bird, but I don't have any eggs, that turn is going to be wasted. Okay? And so we're just hearing in. the judge right. laying down so the law as before as as the players the start. As long as it's right. on the paper, you're good. Thank you. Yeah, that, I mean, that can really hurt you if you lose an action. Uh, I don't think it happened last year. You asked a question, then we got in a Yeah. Okay. Where are you from? Montreal. Okay. So we see the players. What, what's really nice is because I kind of looked ahead at this this table. We've got a really nice chatty table. Players just want to be there to have fun. You said you we were see, uh, We can introduce our players in the top left corner. We have Maria Clark sitting in seat one, uh, Rob Garrett sitting in seat two. We Mitchell Shore sitting in seat three, first. who said hi, mom, in case uh, we talked uh, over that. Uh, yeah. I just want to shout out to Mitchell's mom. And nice. uh, we have Mike Tubzuski sitting in seat first. four. Okay, so I'm shuffling the yeah. little tiles. I mean, so, you know, yeah, sure. not giving anything away. I, I've played Rob. Rob's a great uh, player. I play with a lot. Uh, plays a lot of great Western Trail as well. Um, I think he lost to... Nick Henning in the semifinal of Great Western Trail right before this video took place. So he's a strong player. Um, and then I've been playing online with Mike a lot as well. So some good players in this in this game here. Yeah, definitely good players. I I mean, they've been through a they've been through the ringer. Wingspan I think was our largest uh, heat and largest event in the in all of WSBGs. So for these players to make it through, they really. 
they really pulled it out. Uh, we saw the we saw Mitchell flipping the end of round goals. So the first end of round goal is going to be the most birds in the forest, and then we have birds with bowl nests with eggs on them in case that flashed by on your screen too quickly. Uh, then we have birds with the sort of stick nests with eggs on them, and then finally we have birds in the water as well. So you know, sitting down looking at the end game bonuses. If you if you see two um, two bonuses for nest types, I, it's going to be star nest birds are going to probably be something you'll see players gravitate towards. I mean, especially if you see three uh, bonuses all about different types of nests, a star qualifies for all three, right? So yeah, you'll probably see players prioritize star bird net star nest birds a little more. We'll see if that pans out, but that might be what I'm thinking. Um, you know, and then I told Mike about an hour before this video was shot that yeah, that no, no, the I, round I, one I, and two I bonus like the, are. The contrast. I'm actually. I, it's all, I'm just stressed out. <laughs> we hear Mike saying that he's stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> Still some chatter around the table. Uh, I know that they were they were being very diligent about the rules and being very diligent about like who chooses what uh, cards first as well too because some some players in future rounds they said were put that into them. Mm. <laughs> but so, Mike, Mike's a running theme with Mike's commentary throughout this will he'll say I I shouldn't even be here I shouldn't even be here didn't expect to be there. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, so I met Mike earlier in the week, and I was I kept giving my dad advice uh, throughout the week on different games, and and then Mike Mike and Mike had hung out with my family a little bit, and and so I had given him some tips throughout the day on wingspan, and he was taking those tips and getting getting wins. So um, so so Mike at least is representing you in spirit. That's what you're saying, Jeff. Yes, yeah. So he's my dark horse to win because I because I gave him you know. 30 seconds of advice. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, back to what I was saying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think the people spend a lot of time focusing on the first and second round bonuses. Yeah. Uh, I, which the problem is that a lot of times, especially with like birds in, in, in a certain habitat, you might tie. And if you tie in the first round, you instead of getting three, you get one point, which is right. almost nothing. Right. And yeah. so, I tend to focus more on setting up for getting first in the third and fourth round uh, as opposed to focusing on all trying to win all four because you spread yourself right. too thin. So, and, and especially with this one, too, I think it's it's pretty interesting because a lot in, in base wingspan, which the players are playing, uh, you'll often see at the end of the game sort of the egg spamming strategy, right? It just works out that taking eggs as all of your turns is sometimes more beneficial than than trying to expand and get more birds. But does that change a little bit with uh, there being the most birds in forest and the most birds in water? The most birds in water being our final uh, our final uh, end game, end, end of round goal. I'm wondering, if we'll see a change in that sort of strategy based upon just just the end game goals. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that the you you want to build an engine so you can score points in the last round consistently. The middle row, the grassland, is obviously going to be the easiest because it scores points on its own. I mean, you you, you lay eggs which are worth points. Yeah. There goes Mike again, saying he has no business being here. We should get and I cut away just, or something. Just to see, yeah, we'll have we'll have a tally. Um, congratulating everyone for being here. Yeah, I mean that's that's something before you know. It's not, I guess, a strategic uh, piece of insight, but. It is a great achievement just to make it to a final table. I think a lot of people, Absolutely. having lost in the finals a couple times, you walk away with a second place in the finals, and you just, you know, you want to punch the wall because you, <laughs> because you're frustrated. But but you you made it there. You played well throughout the day. So all four of these competitors should be proud. Yeah. And hopefully we get to see a a bird come down here so we can see who takes the early lead. I. If I was looking at this, best bird to play would be something that's cheap to play in the grasslands would probably yeah. be not. I'm sorry, the uh, the, the forest. forest. Yeah. I'd be looking for like a chickadee, something that gives me 
incremental advantage that I can put in the green row to kind of start me off right. Yeah. yeah. I think Maria Maria started with, uh, I believe, two cards in her hand. I think everybody pretty much started with two cards in their hand, except for Mitchell, it seems, who started with three uh, in, his, in his hand. But we see, we see Maria drop down that owl into the grasslands right away. And Rob, who's who's heard you, snags that, that vulture right off the bat because it's free. It's free to play. It doesn't cost any food. Uh, and it also has a pink power where uh, if any if any players, um, if any players, uh, carnivore, not a carnivore, right. but uh, attack, I think attack it's, works. It's then yeah. they get a bonus as well. Predator, predator, predator. I think might be what it's Anybody's, called. Yeah, I think that's so, it, sure. Going back to Maria's play, that's I think the burrowing owl, or it might yeah. be a different kind of owl. But a couple things to note here. One is uh, it's a starbird, so it's going to help her for rounds oh, two and three. Geez. So that's a good a good consideration for her. I saw the we pay. I was sure that was a joke. Yeah, <laughs> like, like a, yeah, yeah. No. Sorry, I get too distracted by the chit chat. So no, no, I think the chit chat's great. It's nice to have a chatty table. Uh, I think I think Mike just thought that Mitchell couldn't play his bird in that row and didn't see that it had all of the the different uh, different areas. And Mike Mike manages to get that crow that came up uh, after Rob took the vulture. Mitchell decided not to take the crow, the, the fish crow, I believe. Uh, the crows, which are sort of, um, in, in my opinion, some of the best uh, early game cards to get. What do you think about the crow plays, Jeff? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think obviously for the the ravens are are band or soft band however the world series does that yeah. uh th those two are you know head and shoulders above the rest um i think so the the reason that the crows the kill deer all those are good is because anything that lets you do get something <laughs> that you would normally get in another row is going to be powerful so if i can get eggs in the top row kind of like it's funny that Mitch played that bird there because Mitch has, Mitch has played another card I think is very powerful early, right? Mm. So Mitch can go to the top row to get food and activate that bird, which I believe is a dove of some sort. I can't yeah. read the name, but it, it gives him an egg. So he can theoretically go to the top row to get food that he needs to play another bird, and he doesn't need to waste an action go into the second row, yeah. and he could still have the eggs he needs to drop a second or third bird in the top row. Um, so any anytime you can, you know, get the benefit of another row without having to go to that row, you're saving yourself an action. Yeah. That's number two. That's number two for Mike saying he doesn't belong here. <laughs> okay, so I think it's is it yeah, Rob's on, turn? Yeah, it's on to Rob. Uh, Maria just took uh, food quickly. Maria sitting with two wheat in her supply. We can see it a, a little bit below her board. And then uh, everybody else's food is sort of above their player boards oriented. I've, I've sort of cropped it in that way so that we can see at least what sort of food they might be working with and what actions they might take. So Rob might be deciding between playing a vulture or playing something else. Now the problem here is for Rob, at least, if you if you play the vulture, I believe the vulture, uh, the vulture only has one spot for eggs, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And so, if you let normally, if you put a bird in the top row and you want to play a second one, you need an egg. So you would have to like play a bird in the top, then lay two eggs on it, then use one of those to play a second bird, and then you can you know start using those birds. You can't do that with the vulture because you don't have two. Well, you could, but you'd be inefficient because you only have one spot for eggs. So he might be having that kind of conundrum. Wow. And he he opts for drawing more cards. He takes, I believe, the Bell Sparrow, which was just a white card, allowing him to draw two bonus cards when played. That feels like... Uh, I, I, always, I always ignore those white birds until at least sort of round three or round two at least. Because they don't they don't contribute to building that engine, right? Yes. So that's a. I mean, 
I was going to comment on how I like it. I liked Bell's Vero. I mean, it's a good bird. Uh, yeah. It holds three eggs. It's a star nest, um, and it That's fits true. in the top row. I don't know if I would have picked it up there, um, just because, like you say, I'd be more focused on getting something that gives me incremental value. Like what Mitch has with this dove here. Mm -hmm. I think it's a dove at least. Yeah. Uh, I like I like that because he's going to probably activate that four or five times, get four or five eggs out of it, which will more than make up for the value of uh, what what Rob's going to end up getting out of that bonus card. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a no. really it's a really oh, solid really start nice from Mitch to to get those eggs and and save that efficiency, right? Oh, okay. I also find like the base board of Wingspan to be a, a lot harder. I find the Oceania board when like teaching new players, it, it's it's a lot less punishing. Your your engine can ramp up a little bit faster, and here you really have to be efficient with those actions if you want to 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 create something strong down the line. Can I throw these in here? Yes. So Mike has uh, has supported Rob in his hypothesis that white cards are okay to play. So he's he's going for that. Now what I so I've had debates with some folks in the past about okay, is it best to play a bird like that later so you already know whether you're going to succeed on the card that you draw right or is it best to get it early so then you can you know build your strategy around the card um and i think it could go either way because i've i've definitely drawn two in the fifth round or fourth round i play a bonus round at the end of the fifth round that's after the fact <laughs> but uh you know sometimes you'll draw two in the last round and yeah. it's your last bird and they're both worth zero um yeah. Not not as common, but uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Double points. I only know it's one of them too. I'm not supposed to not know this one. So looking at the birds in the supply, mm -hmm. it's none of them are matching. I don't think any of the nests match, and. None of these are super duper exciting. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the so common loon does have the stick nest, which yeah. will be okay. our third round um, goal. But also the common loon is, is a tough one because it potentially allows other people other than you to draw. In 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 wingspan, if you're at this sort of like competitive level, for me, I would. I would opt to avoid all the birds that give other players things. Is there are there scenarios in which you might do something differently? Yeah, so I um when you're a magic player kind of goes back to poker, right? Reading those tells. Counterspells is all I'm pretty sure this is the third time they've mentioned counterspells in a game of wingspan, which is a little a little off the wall, but uh but I'm all for it, you know? Uh Maybe we'll see some of those happen. You never know. The, it's the final of World Series. It might happen. Some wild cards here, yeah. I uh, what? Back to your to your point. I think like something like the hummingbird kind of goes with what I was saying about having something that gives you a resource that you don't typically get in that row, right? So if you mm -hmm. play the hummingbird in the middle, let's say that gives you it gives you and everyone a food. But it does it when you're taking eggs, right? right? So it's it's giving you that thing that's out of the you know typical row. Yeah. And so and I think that that can be good. Um, it still builds on your efficiency. Yeah. So Rob plays the vulture that we thought yep. he would play, and you know I so I I typically don't like playing the vulture when there's not at least one other chance of it succeeding. Yeah. But since, since we had the owl from Maria mm -hmm. and then apparently Mitch is colluding with Rob and decided to play a carnival right after he played the vulture. But yeah. no, that's, that's a joke. There's no collusion there, but, <laughs> but it's really I, good for Rob. He, he yeah. has two opportunities to cash in on that vulture. I actually play with these. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's challenging. Um, so, because in the first round, like you're not gonna you're not gonna have that many cards or that many options, right? So if you kept your starting hand with the intent to play that burrowing owl, or you're playing, whichever, you're gonna play it because you yeah. got the exact food you need. You gotta play it, right? So 
Um, and there's nothing out there he could have pivoted to really that made yeah. any sense. So, I mean, he's probably going to succeed on that a few times. I think that's one where you roll the dice, not in the bird feeder, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do that. I think a lot of owls do that with rolling dice outside of. Uh, yeah, and they're looking for mice, I think. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. Yeah, that I saw someone. So if this one's here, and uh, but left the egg one alone, so it weakens the eggs ones just a little. I think they're talking expansions here. So to your point, the board's rebalanced with the expansion. I so I like what they did with the with the boards, mm -hmm. but some of the birds in the expansion are crazy. Which, uh, it's like I was playing a turn, uh, a smaller tournament somewhere, and somebody played a bird where they could rescore their end game bonus, and he had like 12 point end game bonus. Wow. And I, and it, you know, it was like a 20 point turn, and it's, it's yeah. a little out of whack, but it's behind the bird. Okay, so, all right, so. Mitch wanting Maria to get her food out there so she doesn't hide her stash. <laughs> and I think so we got Rob. Looks like Rob has dropped, uh, I believe that's a Ibis or a Heron in the bottom. I think mm -hmm. that's one where you can trade an egg for a food, maybe? I'm I'll not sure. I hope you don't mind that. But it does look like, I, I believe it's a stick nest, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to help him with the round three goal, which will be beneficial. Um, you know, it's not the cheapest bird of all of all times. I, I don't love playing three-cost birds in the first round. I, I'd prefer to play a lot. Yeah. Okay. I should have tapped harder. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I like that. So Mitch has rolled. Telling us he's not sure he likes what rolled. The, someone called it the sled worm. There's almost uh, right, one of everything except. Uh, yeah. Unless she very specifically needed I heard sled worm. mice, yeah. I think it's hard not to like that roll. Yeah. Because there's a little bit of everything. Um, of course, he might be holding that bird that eats three mice and he hated the roll. Right. So I only need a worm, but I'm taking an owl. I'm not sure exactly which one I want. Oh, you're, you're not sure. Uh, sled, uh, I was calling that the sled worm. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, Mitchell's still deciding. It's really, it feels really powerful to get to get those two forest birds out early on, especially because then it allows you to get the two food source every time, and then you almost don't need to revisit the forest area uh, unless you have specific ones that you want to play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I have to roll one dice to see if the Eastern Screech Owl can catch a mouse. So it's one uh, it's an Eastern Screech Owl. I mm. figured out which owl it is now. Thank you, Mitch, for that. So let's see if Mitch's luck is with him today. He doesn't hit it. I think he hits a worm. Now, so obviously Mitch probably needed specific food, so he re-rolled here. However, I believe he re-rolled. I believe there were two left, right? And so it came down to one die, and he chose to re-roll. Mm -hmm. to get new options. He could have elected not to reroll so that there were five dice outside of the feeder <laughs> to greatly increase his odds of hitting off of his screech owl. Right. So it's not a common thing to do, but sometimes I might take a somewhat suboptimal food, especially if I don't know what I'm using my food for, just right. so I have a really high chance of hitting off my predator because one point could be the difference um, yeah. in the game. I mean, in my final... I believe I won by one point. Uh, right. And, yeah, it was yeah. a very close game. A five-player final of Wingspan, too, if I remember yes. correctly. And uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know if this is foreshadowing for how Rob's game's going to go, but the gentleman next to me in that final played a vulture right around the same time Rob did, and it I think it succeeded maybe once or twice in getting food the whole game. So... Hopefully, Rob gets a little better luck uh, with his vulture this game. Yeah, we see. I feel Maria's had a had a pretty tough hand because the birds in the bird feeder that have come up haven't been cheap for forest. We see Maria going for three food and having to take three actions just to get one dice each time. That feels <laughs> that feels like it might hurt. But hopefully, she's sitting on something uh, very strong that that she's building up for with all of that wheat. 
Yeah, so three wheat. Uh, so there's the bird that costs three wheats. Oh, mm -hmm. hold on. Sorry, Mike's talking to me about me. There we go. They were like pacing out in the lobby, I guess, last year for four and a half hours because it was live streamed so they could see. But also, like, they were like super stressed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, like, that I it, can't even imagine my mommy's and my mommy and daddy coming here and like doing that. Yeah, they do not love me as much as his parents. Do. I think like, I have I the the best them. parents around. So. I'm so jelly. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That's awesome sure, that your yeah. parents came both years too. It's a family both years, affair. Yeah. My dad, uh, my dad played this year, uh, so that was fun for him. And amazing, yeah. So, so back to the game, though. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm here to talk about the game, not my my lovely parents. But um, well, they're lovely. We got to give them a shout out. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that Maria is going to play the. I think it's called the Morning Dove. It holds six. It goes in the grasslands. She might just be saying, you know what. I don't need the top row in my life. I'm yeah. just going to skip that first round goal, uh, which I think is totally viable. Um, who knows? Maybe she's going a different route. I don't know. She might also, one other thing is she could have the play a second bird in your top row. And so she might be chaining like two or three bird plays, right? Um, which would be a really cool, powerful way. Cause like, <laughs> winning a bonus sure is one thing, but sneaking in there to win a bonus, yeah. that's that's how you know you're living. You know, that's good stuff. Oh, yeah, that one's way better odds. No, that's a roller and, too. Yeah, so it appears that I think Mitch failed on another hunt, which yeah. Rob is also hating the failure. He's all the rest of you guys got your life together. I'm going to play a bird. I'm playing Okay. Ah, uh, the blue jay. Which I think goes in the middle row, top row. He's yeah, he's playing an egg, so he's putting it in that top row. Top row, okay. Again, now tied for that uh, end of end of round bonus, scoring uh, really scoring Mitchell and Mike. Nothing much unless they invest into a third bird in that row. Yeah, and I think the Blue Jay is is the Blue Jay one that flies around when when he, he flies to other rows. I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think the Blue Jay you gain one wheat from the bird feeder if available, and you can cash it on the card or not. So it has that flexibility. Ah. It's a bull nest, so getting ready for that second round. It holds two eggs and it's worth three points. Okay. Yeah, and. We, I took out the champ. I am the champ. Good. Mike is pointing out that if whoever does win the ring will become a target at their uh, game group back home. <laughs> that is, in fact, no, very true. <laughs> I, I've suffered from that. You can speak from personal experience. <laughs> oh, good. Now, now they're pointing out what we've already talked about, which is I lost in the first round. So. No, uh, no shortage of stabs at Jeff here, but we'll... <laughs> well, they're just lowering your threat level for 2024. That's good. That's good. So, Maria does play a bird, and it mm -hmm. appears that it is... I believe that's a woodpecker uh, in the top, which I think is um, a similar effect to the Blue Jay, if I'm not mistaken. It, uh, it caches things. It's not incredibly... Just yeah, I think it's the exact same effect. Kind of it's the with worms, acorn so. woodpecker. Uh, yeah. I know it's. A, I think it might be. Um, I think it might also be wheat. Oh, okay. Looking at my my reference here, worth five points. It is neither a bull or stick nest though, and it yeah. holds, holds four eggs. So I see. I so I really liked Maria's start with the with the owl. I think that's a good star nest contributing to two bonuses, but. I just I don't love playing a three cost bird in the first round because you lose so much tempo on the yeah. other players, you know, and so we're basically at the point where, you know, everyone has two birds in play, but you'll notice that 
because Maria had to go to the top row so many times to get just one thing, you know, uh, Mitch has already, you know, has three eggs on one of his birds. Mm -hmm. He has attempted to hunt a couple times, which did not (laughs) succeed. Um, You know, so she's a a little behind because she played a more expensive bird. Um, And even though he's worth, I believe, eight or five or he's he's worth more points but you know i think mitch will get more value in the long term so yeah i've called the judge like in almost every game to be like uh can we get a okay, card rob, I, don't know what I, was I don't know this rule rob deciding here on card card draw i believe so but i uh yeah rob going for cards again maybe he'll take the loon that we were uh, discussing or he might be going off the top of the deck yeah i think i just saw a hand float through and and grab something off the top of the deck. The auto reroll on if it's empty. That's a high man. And he does have the option of getting rid of his one of his two eggs to um, draw another card. Oh, like the if they're gain a thing if it's available. So I will say one thing: if you're playing any game, Wingspan, Arc Nova, any game with cards. And you're going to draw some number of cards greater than one. I always start with the one off the top of the deck, so you get mm. that information and draw them one at a time. So yeah, you know what he saw on that first card could tell him whether or not he wants to take a loon or or one of the other cards out here. Um, I think that the so the pelican can be a good card in a tuck yeah, strategy. Yeah, for sure. Um, you get two. You get two tucks for the cost of one fish. Yes, I. It's. You just it's hard to, to always fish. have the fish. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to get the fish, right? And if you're gonna have to go to the green row to get the fish and then back to the bottom, then it's kind of not as efficient as some of the other engines. But um, if you can find a card that gets you a, a fish somehow, then then you're in good shape. We, I oh, we can't see Mitchell see playing the, the indigo bunting. It costs ah. a worm, a wheat, and a cherry. It's a but it's a bull nest, and when activated, gain one worm or a uh, cherry from the bird feeder if there is one. So again, going for that that dual dual action. Now Mitchell gets food when he gains eggs, and he also gains eggs when he gets food. It's a real symbiotic relationship that he's chosen. So I I have a sus- I mean, so this goes back to what I was saying earlier. I like what Mitch did here by playing mm-hmm. that in the second row because a, a newer player, less experienced, might say, well, you know what? I want to win this first round bonus. Get those yeah. two points. So I'm going to put it in the top row. But getting yeah. more food when you're already getting food in the top row is... It's not that great. So I think he correctly makes the decision to put it in the second row here. Yeah, we see Mike grab food quickly. Grab some food. And, okay, so he chooses not to cash it on the card. Mm -hmm. So I think I would say generally, well... I, I probably cash too early. There's probably a tipping point of when you're supposed to start cashing, and uh, he he hopefully has a good plan for what to do with that food. But I'm all about getting those points as soon as possible. So. You threw two and rolled three. You didn't do it. It's fine. Does it matter? No. I came up in a game we played a few weeks ago. Player was just talking about how you re-roll the dice in the bird feeder. I mean, I can kind of it's through a dice tower, so yeah. Imagine you're like rolling dice with a buddy and you throw one, throw it onto the other one. Yeah, it's funny. People complain about how you randomize things a lot. I find, and it's yeah. like, well, it's if, if I roll all of them randomly, who cares? My friends are watching. What order? Yep. I'm just kidding. But if you think your friends are doing that, you're like, I don't trust you. Etiquette. It's just like. But you can't okay, so she there, so. rolled. So is she in the middle of her top row action then? Yeah, I believe so. Took a re-roll. She's got the choice of a lot of worms and wheat, and one fish, I believe, and then one solo worm. Mm-hmm. 
takes the solo worm and not a slash, making it easier for someone else to reroll unless she's planning on rerolling. I don't think she can, but uh, so uh, not to be too critical after she was just put on trial for how she rolls the dice. But I, I think <laughs> in general, in general, if you if you are going to take uh, a worm or a wheat, you would want to take the take away one of the ones that give more options the nine times out of ten. Yeah, because because yeah. you know you don't want to. If your opponent needed a wheat, it's better to leave the solo worm out there so that they don't have that option uh, in general. So something to think about. We see Rob also taking food. He's discarding uh, a card to take the wheat, oh, a worm and a wheat as well. Probably wouldn't have affected things because Rob still needed a worm. But if Rob was taking two wheat just then, uh, Maria yep. could have affected that. Yeah. So Mitch, does Mitch have food? No, Mitch just used a lot of his food here. So yeah, we have, I believe, two two actions left per player. Um, so th I can't tell how many cards Mitch has in his hand. It looks like zero, maybe, or maybe one. Yeah, Mitch started with three cards uh, and hasn't taken the draw card action. So I think he's out. But <laughs> yeah, dude, it sounds better. To so semis, man. Yes. <laughs> Based on uh, Mitch's um, facial expression. Yeah, that's how far you got this year again, too, was uh, semis of Great Western, you said? But that, that was only two rounds this year, because it was a four. Wanted to, give, wanted to make sure yes, everyone so knows that Rob so made the semis and <laughs> give him some props <laughs> while, <laughs> you know. I think if I had to guess what's going on in Mitch's head, you know, put a little chat bubble above his head. Mm -hmm. I think it's, man, these birds aren't that great. And, yeah. But I have no like cards, you, like, so you, like, he's thinking, can't sleep anyway, so do I just <laughs> take some food and get some eggs and then prepare myself for a better rack in round two? Because yeah. uh, Maria was first this round, so Rob will be first in the second round, so Mitch is going to get second crack at yeah. whatever comes out, right? So. Knowing where that turn order is and getting the fresh reset of birds is always really important. Yeah. Um, Mitch doesn't have a very diversified role, but uh, with some he takes, he basically has a choice between worms and wheat. But also when you don't know what you need later on, what, what would you what would you opt for, Jeff, in terms of food? Do you do you have that sort of uh, I'm sure there's a breakdown of what uh, food appears. Oh, more. yeah. Yeah, so and you can find it on the bonus cards too, right? Because there are a few bonuses which are have fish yeah. in your title. So I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now, there is there are levels of preparedness for for these these tournaments <laughs> and games, uh, and I I rely mostly on. Uh, instinct and good fortune and i mm -hmm. do not memorize all 190 birds uh you know some people probably know that you know okay birds with cup nests are more likely to require a wheat than a worm i don't know right. that uh yeah. off the top yeah. of my head um sometimes i will so two things if you if you have something that requires like if you have the end game bonus for for worms right mm -hmm then take a worm, right? Because you right. know you want to play those kind of birds. If you can think of a specific bird that would really make your game, right? Like if, let's say, uh, Cedar Waxwing would just make your middle row awesome right. or whatever, then, okay, take the cherries because you know you need two cherries to play that card that would really make your game. But, I mean, I don't think in a vacuum one is better than the other unless you have some, some, re some compelling reason why. You know, yeah. Um, of course, if you if you have all the time in the world, studying those kind of things and knowing those kind of things can really help. Uh, you know, your chances at WSVG. Um, it's just, you know, short of making flashcards, it's very challenging to to have that kind of knowledge. You know, so. Well, but I think that also is sort of emblematic of of why this is a fun event too. It, it, 
I feel like people play cards people cards. play to win, but for a lot of games too, you have to be adaptable. You just right? The whole yeah. the yeah, whole yeah. idea of this tournament yeah. is uh, is to find the best all around board gamer, right? That adaptability that uh, not necessarily streamline. You can streamline, you can focus, and you can try to get that that ring. But if you want to do well in the later rounds, you want to be able to have those skills of adapting. Uh, and I think I think Wingspan is a game where you need to be able to adapt too. You have your opening hand. But then you don't. There's so many bird cards that are going to come up. You can't. You can't bank on there being one card. It's great if it does come up, right. but you need to. You need to play the board. You need to play what the other players are doing. Uh, I think that's why Wingspan is so well attended and and people enjoy it so much. Dude, watching so, Castle run, ready, set, bet is one of the most entertaining yeah. things I have ever seen. Like he is literally calling it like a racehorse, yeah. like announcer. He's like, he's like, and boxer, yeah. so number twelve person the lead. He's like, oh, seven takes the lead over one of the yeah. line. Like, I think that's the game my girlfriend blew them last year when I was playing. It's like a big long one. He's, he's got like yeah, the I just get to see moving. it. Oh, I was playing, but, yeah. yeah. Mike talking about how Tom has been in open gaming running so many games of Ready, Set, Bet. Just yes. making sure that the open gaming area is popping in case you happen to be eliminated. You've got some fun stuff to do. Yeah. Well, in 2025, you can enter a Phoenix event um, after you lose. Right? That's true. You can enter that mini Phoenix tournament. It's a two-round tournament. You can walk away with uh, cold hard cash. So... Now, and they're also talking about William Hung of American Idol uh, right. fame. Yeah, so you were right. A lot of good chit chat at this table. Um, but back to, to talking about the actual game here, mm -hmm. we will notice that uh, Mike has played the crow in the middle row. So mm -hmm. I think obviously it's a great card because, like I was saying, you're able to get resources without having to waste actions in the top you could just stick an engine in the middle and then secondly we see we see um uh, maria just make good on her on her predator rob rob gets a gets a food with his buzzard finally finally it's the day for the vultures <laughs> So, yeah, my, I mean, Mike is setting himself up and wisely saying, you know what, I'm happy with the tie for round one bonus as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's good because neither one of them overvalued that bonus. Yeah. Like next year. Okay, let's not play. I'm not going to make final table. This is like next year, but I'll make final table. I'm going to be like, slip word, call it out. Okay. I'm wondering what he said. You didn't ask for clarification. They're creating uh, inside <laughs> jokes for next year. For so next year. Already preparing that this will be the final table next year. Yes. Well, I sadly will not be uh, re-entering the Wingspan Arena because uh, I will be playing Great Western Trail on this day. So. Oh, they're on the same day. Okay. They are. Yeah, it got mixed around. So. Okay, so Rob is taking his penultimate action of the round. As Crokinole players say, by the one or... Or sorry, Maria taking hers, oh, and cool. Rob is going to oh, take his last back. action. Yeah. Uh, so Rob has three uh, things here. So <laughs> he, by if he ties them for two, I believe it takes it from them both getting two down to all three of them getting one. Like, just this not your that exciting. What you have to call this, this die? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that will be the question. What did we call that die? And if they say the wrong one, I'll be like, yeah. You don't love me enough okay. to watch a two-hour game of Wings. No, not no. Well, for all of Mike's friends out there, it's a sludge worm. The answer yes. is sludge worm. Then you can get to gaming with Mike. <laughs> Yes, Mike is dancing uh, to the beat of his own drum there in the bottom left corner. I like it. He's having a good time. Rob is, I believe, deciding if he wants to play a bird here. Um, oh, yeah, to find out if anybody's got Yeah, Rob not dancing as much. He seems pretty still. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't have a card. Neither Rob? Do I, neither do I, so we know it ain't us. <laughs> She's giggling so, with a smile. <laughs> I bring it up again, we might get we'll see if Rob okay, continues to fish it. from the deck or yeah. just oh, lays some eggs. He's got all just kind of going for eggs. Oh, He's, He's got all putting it in the he second spot. The yeah, it might be him. Going exciting. for eggs, just locking in some eggs, preparing for next round. So 
what I I think what Rob's thinking here might be that he so again he's going to be first next round mm-hmm. in round two. Okay, yeah. so he's thinking I'm going to get three fresh birds. I'd like to be able to draw two of them. If he sees two great birds, he wants to take them both, and yeah. so he wants to be able to activate the. Um, the bottom row exchange an egg for a bird or a card right and then also i believe that that bird he has down there wants to give up an egg for something yeah to draw potentially even more cards so him taking those two eggs is just prepping for him i would i would bet my life on the fact that he's going to go to the wetlands as the first action and draw bird cards next round yeah and hopefully for rob there's something super juicy in the in the tray Mm -hmm. i think that's a great that's great pre pre pre-planning by rob that's a really nice final move for rob yeah just making sure he has that option and mitch is just doing big things he's uh laying eggs and getting uh getting resources so Mm -hmm. i like i i like the way mitch is looking here yeah He's really got a solid ramp going. But Mike also having played three birds as well, the number yes. of birds laid down is is generally decently significant because you can you've improved your actions so much, right? You've you've been able to spend that time. You've been able to get those points down on the board. So. We Mike does take he, the common loon. I yeah, believe. grabs the common loon. This might be a power bird card. You guys don't know, but I got um, one. <laughs> that's on our one dollar coin. Uh, so we refresh. And Mike Mitchell's is from is uh, Mont- Montreal. The wood duck. So uh, shout out to the Canadians with the loon on the on the loony. Loonies and toonies, yep. right? Toonies. That's true. That's what yes. we got. <laughs> I uh, I just spent some time with with uh, Jonathan Naylor, also a Canadian, who uh, mm-hmm. I, well I can't say stole my ring in Great Western Trail, but he 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 has the ring that I would I covet, you know. So yeah, he has the precious. <laughs> so looking at the. I don't know if this was, you know, what I was brought here to do, but looking at, you know, well, each round we'll kind of see who who we think's yeah. in the driver's seat. So yeah, I think yeah. Maria is hurting a little bit. Yep. Didn't didn't play a a very cheap bird, right? I mean, she played two pretty pricey birds. Um, that kind of hurt her on the tempo. She's, I would say, a step behind maybe. Um, and I don't know that she drew any good birds. Yeah. It didn't look like she drew any. So I'm not optimistic that now she's in fourth seat. It's kind of a tough spot for her right now. Yeah. She's going to get the last opportunity at the tray. And she's not quite ahead right now. Um, they're talking about the uh, the cover bird, the the poster child, the scissor tailed fly catcher, which is on the box of wingspan. That's uh, ah. worth eight points. Uh, but when it's activated, all players gain one worm from the supply. But, but eight points, eight points is a pretty high bird. Yes. So, and it also there's a fairly depends on who's listening. Good chance that means yours was better. Oh yeah. Yes, that is how you rate jokes, Mike. Whoever laughs more, that's a better joke. <laughs> good, good point there. Uh, so the yeah, the that's another one of these. Everybody, you know, it's a, a worm party, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Everyone gets the worm. Like I said, I don't mind putting it in the middle uh, because everyone gets a worm. He's doing the Oprah Winfrey there. Uh, yep. But if you're getting the worm when you take the middle action, right? Then that could be better for you than other. Yeah, uh, than other folks. Because now, you can plan you do, it. Yeah, you can plan for it, right? And sometimes people just have a bunch of worms that they don't necessarily need, right? Uh, now, one thing to note, though, you know, you want to make sure you're building, if you're building an engine in the middle, you want to get some stuff that adds points. So, like, mm-hmm. if Mitch already has one that doesn't get him points, right? It gets him resources. Right. If he gets another one like that, it's great. He's getting an abundance of resources, but he's going to need something that, like, tucks cards or caches food or lays additional eggs to really get that. You're not going to win the game with a four or five point row. You need yeah. to probably get a six or seven pointer uh, at the end of the game. 
Okay. So, do you guys know Brass? Rob, I would, I would say. Rob's got a tough thought here because I don't think yeah. he liked any of those birds that came up. Yeah, those were not the the droids he was looking for. Um, he almost wants somebody else to take that common merganser to to give his vulture a little bit a uh, little bit more likelihood of of making good. But it's made good once so far, so. Yeah. He won great. Oh, he's the dude with the, the fabulous yeah, unicorn. God, yeah, I love that. He, I told him people know him as the unicorn guy. Unicorn guy. Yeah. yeah. I know him as the unicorn They are talking oh, about Jonathan animal. Naylor. It's his second shout out in this video. So, so Rob is laying, or no, playing a bird. So mm -hmm. I think. Can I just ask what that card does? Because I don't have a I think that it, even uh, though he's set up for here. potentially oh, drawing yeah, two good yeah, things sorry, out of the tray, right. if you don't see good stuff, I think yeah. I like his yeah, play no, here. He no, can no. Um, play that duck. Um, and that one, I believe, is a draw two, discard one at the end of the turn. Uh, I think he was just uh, saying it to Mike. I believe it's a tuck. You tuck one and draw one. Tuck one, draw one. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take that. So it, it looks like Rob is going to go for, like we were talking about at the beginning, Go mm -hmm. for an engine in the bottom row. I mean, so, I so you just play, but you've yes, played play, it. Play. Yeah. yeah. If you're trying to build an engine in the in the bottom row, right, it's a little more challenging than building an engine in other rows because you need to be able to really get enough points to make it work going to that bottom row every time. Right. So you probably want to get like five tuck birds in theory if you can. Oh, are they pulling Yeah, they're going to pull back. So. I, I love that. You know, I birds like the uh, the bush tit or similar birds where you tuck a card and you get an egg, that's two points for that brown power. So um, if you are building towards that, those are the kind of birds you're looking for. Yeah. Um, cedar, waxwing, and similar birds where you can tuck a card to get a resource. Those are the kind of things that Rob's going to want to look for. Yeah. We probably didn't start till closer to 920 by the time we and Mitch has, I believe, one card in hand. Yep, just drew from the deck. We see Mike snap up that uh, that poster child. Mike looking to ignore the bottom row and, and develop that grassland. So Mike might be trying to... That's the only cut bird out there, so he might mm -hmm. be thinking about taking that partially for the round two bonus um, yeah. to kind of box people out. I don't, I mean, it's a great bird. Uh, it is a little, it's eight points, right? Which is, there are some yeah. nine pointers, but eight points is pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the only thing that I kind of think is going against it in Mike's seat is that he already has the crow. So they, they fill a similar role. So that's something that to think about, but I, I wouldn't say that I. It was wrong by any stretch of the imagination. It fits the round goal. It's yeah. eight points, which is great. Um, and I think that his blue jay can get one of the required resources for it, so it should be easy for him to play it. We see Maria going for food again. Maybe Maria has another card, but I I don't know if. Uh... Did she keep three at the beginning? Maybe she must have kept three. Otherwise, we would have to assume she would draw a card off the top of the deck if she didn't like what she saw. This bald eagle is uh, it's a nine-pointer. It, mm -hmm. it is a it is a stick bird for round three bonus goal. Yeah. And uh, potentially could fuel Mike's uh, common loon. So I wonder if Mike is is keeping that in his back of his mind as like. Maybe I take this bald eagle, give five fish, and then just go ham with my loon. That yeah. might be... That's an option. I mean, even if you... I think, you know, best case, right, you get five fish. You're never going to do that very, very yeah. seldom. Yeah. But I think if you get one or two fish off of it, and you get a nine-point bird out there, especially if it qualifies for a round goal, yeah. or in this case, the two most important round goals... I, I would be surprised if the bald eagle makes it to the end of the round without someone taking it at some point. Yeah, it's pretty huge, especially yeah. if you get two fish, you've essentially play, paid one rat for contributing to two end of round goals, like you said, and uh, one rat for nine points. That's a pretty good conversion. 
Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I would be less excited about it in Rob's seat because he wants to build that engine in the bottom row, it looks mm-hmm. like. It looks like that's what he's leaning towards. Um, and, and the bald eagle doesn't contribute to the engine, right? You're more likely to play that bald eagle if you're building your engine in one of the other rows and then yeah. you just plop him down there for points um but i would i don't i promise i haven't yeah, watched ahead uh, so if i end up being different. right then i apologize but i i would i think it's going to end up that mike grabs that if if given the opportunity yeah although the common loon does uh benefit people who have the least uh water birds and so if you chains bald ego into common loon but you're still going for the final end of round goal oh so. i'm so sorry i was thinking well, there were, the other bird was out there where you tuck fish that's sorry that's right, the one that was i was pelican. thinking yeah that was okay the pelican. i was thinking bald eagle use the bald eagle to tuck for the pelican into the pelican but, yeah okay let's cut that out in in the edit <laughs> so i don't look like a fool it's it's there it's it's th- that's part of the game right it's part that, of uh, there's a lot to track I yes. think it's yeah. uh, important to note. So Mitch, Mitch took lay eggs action, got the one resource uh, from his uh, his yep. indigo boonting. Mm-hmm. And then Mike is going to do a re-roll here. Yeah, so. manages to get that one wheat. Yeah, and then decides not to okay. cash. He's deciding not to cash. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, I thought he was going to dance again, but it was just a head bob, so we didn't get <laughs> we didn't get round two of the dance moves. Maria is playing a bird in her wetlands. It appears because there is no a or she's put the cube yeah. in that row. I don't want to be recorded playing. I was very bad at uh, putting the cube in the right place. I was mm. never very good at that. Um, so we will. The suspense is broken. Aha! Another hunter. Rob is excited because this is a hunter that succeeds quite frequently. Um, so, and and she's likely to want to draw cards. Uh, a handful of times here because she has no cards. So, so Rob is sitting there thinking, "Oh, this is great uh, for me." Yeah, but, this is the peregrine falcon, also a stick, uh, a stick nest as well. So contributing to that level three and the level four, a really nice get by Maria. So, I don't know this to be true, but there's a chance Maria is sitting on uh, the two perk carnivore bird as her end game bonus because she she has taken two carnivore birds here. Yeah. She's also taken two birds that require uh, rats, so that's another bonus card that she might be edging towards here. Um, yeah. So. You'll notice that uh, Rob has two in the top and two in the bottom, mm-hmm. and then Maria has gone for like the one, one, one. So, I so generally getting two in a lane makes it so you're activating the ability, you know, the level three ability. Yeah, and that's really powerful. So I like to try to get to two if I can. Um, yeah, because that one you're not really getting too big of a benefit. Like yeah. Maria still has to discard something to trade in for all three of her actions. So I generally try to get like two cheap birds in one row and then run that row in the like round two early game type thing. Yeah. Uh, not to say that I haven't had success doing what Maria's doing, but I think because generally I like to have my board looking a little more like I mean, Rob's uh, the with the, the level two or two birds putting you at level three. Yeah. Well, that, that ability just feels so good, right? We saw Maria have to have to take the food action three times in that first round and uh, yeah. only getting three food out of it compared I mean, you, to the other boards who can now take it, you know, one and a half times to get that right, same I mean, amount. The top row, right? I mean, if you have no cards to discard, which you often don't in the Mm -hmm. round two, then, I mean, Rob's action is twice as efficient as Maria's, you know, which is, that's tough to come back from if someone's getting double the value every turn that you are. 
Sorry, yeah. So you do two cards. We see Rob going for bird cards. Four, taking four, that, four. taking that eagle. I see. I know what I'm talking about, Chris. <laughs> I, I I knew the the eagle was a strong pick. So you can uh, you're allowed to stay on the commentary for the rest of the game, Jeff. All right, perfect. <laughs> Send uh, send whoever you had in the wings home. So Nick Henning, you can go home. There you go. <laughs> See how I said in the wings? That was a. Are we counting bird puns too? Is there a tally? Puns? There'll be yeah. a tally. Players at home can uh, count Jeff's bird puns. You should check out Jeff's uh, winning speech from last year. Chock full of bird puns. It was uh, probably my favorite speech of 2022. I. Chris, I have a speech uh, that is three years now in the making for when I, I have so many cow puns, you know. That I remember I, you saying that in 2022 as well. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Just, you know, I'll, okay, sorry, enough about me. Back to the, to the action here. So, okay, so interesting card that comes out. So, so um, Rob took the bald eagle and I believe one off the top. Oh, mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, and he and tucked, also was able to cycle. A, yeah. Yes, and they took another one off the top. So, so what we're reading from Rob is I'm not so big on the Merganser, and I'm not big on the Woodpecker. Mm -hmm. I kind of agree. The Woodpecker, like, you know, the the top row for him, he can draw two. Um, he has no brown powers up there, so he's not interested in building his engine from the top. Yeah. He's either going to pivot to a, a strong middle row engine, or what I think is more likely is he, he's going to get a tucking engine going in the bottom row. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, enough about Rob's potential engine here. We've got some exciting... Uh, we do have a, a very good card being played, so we should we should look at that. So Yeah. Mitch has dropped the bomb here in round two with the uh, Chihuahuan Raven. I think that's the Chihuahuan, not the other one, right? Yeah, it does look Chihuahuan. like a Chihuahuan, yeah. Which, actually, Chihuahuan Ravens are constantly outside of my house, and they wake me up in the morning. So Because I, I live uh, in Southern California, which is very near Chihuahua, Mexico. So uh, they are obnoxious. They, they crow quite loudly. But more importantly... To the fans at home, they have a very powerful ability. Yeah, um, fantastic ability. Get rid of one egg to get two food. Yes. So, like I was saying earlier, if you're able to never, ever, ever go to that top row and mm -hmm. just lay eggs and get your food that way, that's a very powerful thing. Yeah. Um, so one caution I will have, I will say, is. Um, last year's final in 2022, I guess two years ago now, but in the final I was in, uh, the gentleman who had the uh, Raven was getting rid of eggs to get resources, and so that's minus one point. Right. And, and I created an engine where I didn't have to get rid of eggs to get resources. I was actually tucking cards to get resources. So it was, you know, he's getting rid of a point to get resources, whereas I was getting a point to get resources so you need yeah. to be careful with the raven that you're making up those points um and yeah. you you want to use those resources to get end up snowballing into more points because you are losing one point every time you throw away an egg so that's it's like obviously one of the best cards in the game but it, you got to be careful it's not without a cost so. do you want to roll rob or do you want the one uh i am happy with the one and Mike has, I believe when I was yammering on about Ravens, Mike has, took some more food. He's took stockpiling. Some more food and started to cash as well, making that pivot uh, to start accruing those points, which is an important important distinction. He's, he's got enough food to do what he yeah. wants, so decides to opt for the point. That's the that's so the I, thread that you got to really balance with with Mike's card with uh, Maria's card. I think does that as well, and then and then with that Chihuahua and Raven, like you were saying. You don't want to end the game with any food. Yes. If uh, well, you want to end the game with one more food than your opponents for the tiebreaker. But uh, hopefully, we don't have to deal with that today. So. Um, the 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 picture of Maria there has her arm extended. So it, uh, I keep thinking that she's taking a turn when I look at the still image, but it appears it is Rob going now. So yeah, Rob Rob was able to cash in. Maria took uh, bird cards, 
and made good tact on that Peregrine Falcon, uh, and then Rob was able to cash in. But uh, Buzzard number two, Black Vulture number two for the Black so, Vulture account. If I was a betting man, I would assume that Rob takes this yellow-headed Blackbird. He, I would assume he drew two off the top, and then now he's going to take... Look at that. There you go. And so the reason I predicted that was because, like I said, Rob is now pretty heavily invested into... I'm the, I'm the tuck bird guy. I'm going to yeah. get my points from tucking birds. I'm going to see how big a number I can write on the tuck bird scoring category. And that's, that's my game. Um, obviously, it's going to be great for him if he has like the two per tucked bird bonus card. But even without that, Based on you know the uh, the fourth round round bonus wants to fill up that wetlands, so yeah. you want to be the guy tucking guy or girl tucking birds, right? Doing something productive in your bottom row. Um, but I'm relaxed, which is more important than than being silent and it going ten percent faster. Yeah. Yes, Mike and I coming from the same school of thought, which is, uh, I actually don't know what the word silent means at a game table, so the, the chit-chat is, is always good. I am going on a honeymoon next year, I feel like a week after this, and I'm like, I'm not being from the All right. So he gets to give his uh, his future wife on his honeymoon. He gets to potentially give her another diamond ring if uh, everything goes his way today. We actually had two players, uh, someone in the finals of Terraforming Mars, which will be dropped soon. Uh, he came here on his honeymoon. So they, they yes. came here in the their their wedding outfits, which was awesome. Yeah, I met that gentleman. He was he was very nice, and they yeah. were having a blast. So. Um, okay, so it's Maria's turn, but I want to talk about this common grackle. So earlier I mentioned the, the bush tit, um, which is a similar type bird. Mm -hmm. So it's a tuck, tucking power, but when you tuck the card, you get to lay an egg. So yeah. I, if I'm Rob, this is priority number one for me, right? Because it does two things well. One is it gives you eggs when you take the blue action, right? So you no longer need to go to the middle row. You can build your engine entirely in the bottom. Well, I mean, you you need to go to the top to get food occasionally. But for the most part, you just get your eggs by going to the bottom. The second thing is it's two points <laughs> off of that brown ability, right? So most of your tucking is just tuck and draw, which is really just a one-point you know, action. But the grackle and the bush tit and i think there's one or two others where you tuck and get an egg you're getting two points out of that brown power mm -hmm. um so those are the kind of cards if you are going with a tuck strategy they're almost essential for your success i would say and they're not even i wouldn't they're they're actually they're not only good in a tuck strategy they're good in other strategies in general yeah. they're very good cards i think so potentially it looks like mike's playing a bird so rob is looking safe from that angle yeah maria could find some use for this uh grackle she has resources to play it so there's a chance she might want it mike uh, playing the poster child worth eight points saying that it'll counteract rob's bald eagle mike mike says he shouldn't be at the table but he seems to be keeping an awful uh awful good track of uh, what people are picking up yes yeah eight points is uh eight points is eight points you know um yeah. that's one of the things that i think uh a lot of times when i play games especially engine builders like this or earth or whatever it's like i want to do cool stuff i want to draw cards and do this and do this but i forget that you gotta lay points to it or not lay points jeez yeah you got to get points to win the game, yeah. you know, and sometimes you get caught up doing cool stuff and you forget to score points. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's very easy in this game to get caught up doing cool things because yeah. there, there are so many fun engines that you can build, but ultimately only a few will uh, lead to success. 
So I don't know. I just saw a flash of yellow across the screen, which means I think she drew a yellow-bellied warbler that we shouldn't have seen, but we did see. So. Uh, no, I think she was yeah. discarding uh, to draw two food. So I think that, oh, okay. that being passed across, it's it's mirrored because I've turned around the boards because they would be Got upside it. down, but I've turned them for our. Uh, so we'll have a bit a bit of a weird okay. perspective going on, but I think Maria's going for her two and yes. then uh, getting her roll. Yeah, so, so that Maria, she can capitalize. She really needs to get a second bird somewhere so yeah. she can start. She's doing a lot of actions that are hurting her yeah. from the efficiency standpoint here. Um, I mean, she's got some good birds in play with powerful effects. It's just she's the base effect of each row is not she's not getting that because she doesn't have that second bird. So yeah, that's the problem with the expensive mind. birds is so like you really need to play cheap birds early even if they're a little less powerful you got to get a couple cheap birds out there so that yeah. you're you just get rolling um and i How long does it take for them to comment and, uh, put it up now we'll see uh, if uh if rob goes for that grackle because he's already sitting on that eagle and he's already sitting on that uh, yellow-bellied warbler yeah so it looks like Whoever they choose to. Yeah, it's, it's be but the grackle would be a nice way to potentially finish out that row. Oh, so yeah. Up, and I don't. Jokes on Mike. I'm yeah. commentating, so he's 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 <laughs> hypothesizing about who would well, be, but it, it'll be me. Oh, no, that's <laughs> dumb, but like, somebody who's like, this oh, is a tough call for Rob. Nice, uh, um, made do made do more difficult by the chit chat here, I think, but. Um, mm -hmm. I totally. I mean, especially since he played. He goes, I uh, plays a whole another ball game. And, I don't know that I would have taken the bald eagle necessarily, game, right? knowing that I wanted to build a tuck engine. Right. Um, but it's hard to say because I mean, it's it's a very good card, and theoretically he could play his engine tuck birds like in slots three and four, and then just in the very last round drop the eagle. Yeah. And it's not that it doesn't hurt him too much. Um, but he might. You're right, though. He might. I think the grackle's too little, so too late. No, it's um, I uh, was joking with my friends when I lost to Cascade. Now, it, it, is, it is possible, too. Like, Rob like, could have no intention of playing that bald eagle and could have uh, pull, pulled it in order to cycle through. He's got the ability to cycle cards, so having yeah. cards in his hand isn't the worst thing. And he might yeah, have just pulled it. It's nine points to deny. Okay. He could play, so he could theoretically the play the grackle in the top row, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I... I tend to like it in the bottom row but he could play it in any row um i i would imagine that he is drawing cards here if i had to be yeah. uh, if i had to guess or he's gonna uh he might get food and then play a bird and then go to draw cards it depends true. he only does have uh, one worm it seems and anyone who showed up not knowing the 16. Mitch might be uh, just giving up on this round four bonus. He's not not positioning too well for the for the water birds here. Yeah. But, okay, but so Mitch's sitting with a heck draw. of a lot of eggs. Yes, which is going to equate to a lot of resources here pretty soon. So. Rob goes off the top first. Oh, for both and, of his, and then we'll see. He'll do his cycle. And again, like I was saying earlier, if you're going to draw two and then you're going to discard one to draw a third one, yeah, look at that. And there's Rob the grackle. Is, Rob's playing a clean game. doing Well, he's doing what I would suggest, so that means, you know, I lost in the first round this year, so what do I know? But he, he's doing he's, he's doing what I think is a good, good play, so... I don't play poker, in case you can't tell. It's not like I can keep my damn mouth shut or my opinions to myself. Oh, sure. would you look at that? Many, it's the bush tit, just it's like I was saying. Tit. So, bush tit is one of my two favorite cards in Wingspan. And yeah. it, cause, so, a star well, nest. What? It's a star nest. It holds five oh, eggs. Wow. <laughs> it has that ability, I was saying, where you tuck to get an egg, right? Mm -hmm. So, all of that is great, right? The, they're the cutest darn things too. They're, I actually get some in my backyard, and they're like the, they're like about this big. They're like the size of a golf ball. Yeah. They're they're just great in every way. But um, 
that obviously didn't last long. Uh, didn't last so long. I'm it was an immediate snap decision, I think, by Mitchell to just scoop that yeah. up right away. Saw the and push, I think that's push right. it happen and just snagged it. Um, yeah, I mean, that helps him for rounds two and three bonus. I don't know what lane he's going to play it in, but I would imagine there's a good chance it goes... It could go in any of the lanes, right, I think? Yeah, it could go in any lane. Yeah. So, I mean, I know he, he's going to pr predominantly be taking that middle action. But one downside with putting the bush hit in the middle is you have to have cards to tuck. And, yeah. and Mitch is going to hurt for getting cards to tuck because he doesn't have much going in the bottom. So, uh, I mean, it goes without saying because this is almost always the case. But Mitch would really like a kill deer in the middle row. That'd be that'd be the dream. Yeah. Uh, but he wasn't gonna let her. I wasn't gonna let her. Okay. So Mike drops a duck in the bottom, which is is uh, that's that loon we saw earlier. Yeah, that common loon where if you have the fewest in the water, you get a card. That might solve Mitchell's drawing card problems because anytime Mike draws cards, if Mitchell doesn't put something down, he draws cards. Yeah. I mean, well, Mitch is obviously, or Mike's obviously not going to do that while Mitch has zero, right? But if Mitch gets up to one, then there's a chance Mike wants him and Mitch to draw. Yeah. Okay. Maria is getting a second bird down in the wetlands, so mm -hmm. looks like another um, woodpecker. And yeah. I believe it's a similar ability with the you can take a uh, take a thing and choose to cash it or or not. Luckily, the guy who I think messed up the most still won. I mean, I would have rather won because he messed up, but like he clearly. Yeah, I think it looks like the red-headed woodpecker, uh, which is yeah gaining gaining wheat from the bird feeder, and cash it on the card. And also, not not a good nest. Not a, uh, it's a, a hole in the tree nest. Yes, I, I was so excited when Maria started with that star nest, but she, he has not had backup, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Okay, so Rob is going to take two food here. So this is... I'm sorry, trying to figure out where Mike's going on vacation. I got distracted there, but I think Rob is is gonna play this grackle uh, as his third bird in the wetlands, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. That's probably why he took the wheat there. We see Mitchell playing that bush tit right now, and it's going into going into that uh, that yeah. wetland. That's good news I mean, for Mike. Yeah, I th I don't think That's that really Mitch could afford. So like so Mitch has an excess of eggs, good. right? He's yeah. got plenty of eggs, so oh, he can basically now draw two on the bottom row, uh, yeah. pretty and consistently. Then, yeah. And if they're not good, he can tuck one and get an egg. So Mitch has not. Mitch has. Mitch basically never has to go to the top row again for the rest of the game, because he has the raven. So yeah. he's only going to need to go to the bottom row and the middle row. I don't know if I could do that now. Or what I Mitch do. wants to do now is find... He wants to find uh, birds that go in the middle row that meet the end requirements, the the, the round requirements, and do something. Like any, any combination of scoring one point, whether it's tucking... Mm -hmm. Or laying an extra egg, or uh, cashing a card, or hunting. Right? One of the he needs yellow birds that get points is what Mitch wants to find now. Which there's not a dearth of. There are plenty of yellow cards that score one point. Yes. Yeah. Now, obviously, he'd be even better if he had gotten like a grackle, <laughs> as well as the bush tip. But yeah. But at least he's got the bush stick going. I really yeah. like the way Mitchell's board is shaking out. It, yes. Like, he, he seems pretty dominant on eggs, too. He's got five five birds down. Mike matching Mike for most birds played. So, yeah, I mean, I like... So it looks like Mitch has the best long-term setup. Um, I think... I love it when a plan comes together. Rob and Mike both have an extra bonus card, so that you know that's something to think about. There is some extra points waiting in the wings there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the as far as the round bonuses go, I believe so. Round two, we're getting close. We're one action away, and if I'm not mistaken, we have the bush tit, and is that the only one down there? I think that's the no. There's two, so Mitch will be at two for round two. Maria's at one. Mike, uh, Mike might be at two if that blue jay. A blue jay, I believe, is a cup. Yeah, and I think the the, uh, the poster child is also a cup, so Mike would be yes. at two because he's locked those two eggs in. So we might have green and red tying yet again, a second tie here. That's that's fun. Rob, uh, Rob has the Vireo, and then, but I think that's it, right? The other ones are there, different John? kinds of nests. Mm-hmm. So it looks like it's going to be a very similar breakdown to last round, where it's a tie for first, tie for second situation here. Yeah. I've kept my three victory and faint slips just as souvenirs. I haven't. I score all my games in, a, in the app, but I haven't. I like it in a souvenirs. I thought about it after the last game just to be like, yeah, like, like why did I win? Like, what was it do? What did it do? I'm going through and I'm trying to tabulate, just making sure that we have a have a read on their scores too, as to where their birds are. I'm like, I don't know what I want, but I know in terms of in terms of point value. Yeah, I. Looks like. Oh, I would say that probably just on raw bird points, Mike's ahead. If I had to guess. Yeah. Because that fish crow is worth six. As yeah, as and uh, we all know and the then eight, six, I think, as well. And the poster child's eight, so you have six, 12, 20, I didn't even need to know. I could 24. I think that like, the top left guy's 24, and then the blue jay's three, so maybe yeah. 27 already. Yeah, that's what I have as well. I need to get my murder. I mean, 27 bird points already at this point no, is no, no, pretty I'm powerful. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's yeah. a, that thing is a high number. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> not very many of his <laughs> birds like, of actually are, score. Like, crazy likely. like they don't have one, very like, engine buildy type, type of stuff. Go yeah. Especially maybe it's free. Yeah, that's how the beginning of the game works. Yeah, exactly. And then Mitch has... 6, 10, 15, 17, I think, base points. So he's down 10 points, but... But he's got he so many eggs. Yeah, yeah, he's got nine eggs, so it's almost a wash. Um, yeah, the bit, I had a pretty, I had a couple of pretty decent pink cards in my one of my rounds that was a three-player game. So the, so the, the, like, the woodcock so looks like he's not going to get picked here, but, I mean, okay. that's one of the few nine-point birds in the game. So uh, kind of going back to what I was saying about right. points being... You know, sometimes you just need a nine-point bird, you know, and uh, some of the time when you're building these engines where you're drawing a lot of cards and tuck and draw and tuck and draw, and it's like, okay, everything's going great. You still need to find those eight or nine-point birds where you can just use three resources to get a bunch of points. Because if you don't find those, uh, then it, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, if I draw 30 cards and none of them are worth anything, it doesn't doesn't matter too much. Yeah. And so is it Maria's turn or Rob? It's probably Rob's turn. Yeah, I He's think on, Mitch's yeah. dove is also worth zero. So I think Mitch Mitch is sitting at 15 right now. We, uh, we get to win if we're oh, OK. I thought that dove was worth a couple might... points. Yeah. But because it's good to get out early, right? Getting those eggs every time, yeah. just accruing those I mean, points pretty consistently. Tools, and it holds a lot uh, of know, eggs like, too, which is nice. Even like a fifth player with player mats and a main board, like I don't think Wonderland's war would fit in this game. Because like, everybody's got it. It's like have you ever played Scythe? Oh yeah. So everybody's got the individual okay. board similar to Mike oh, talking about Wonderland's War. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really fun game. I played that recently for the first time. I haven't tried that one, but it looks mm. cool. Yeah. It looks real fun. Really good push your luck if you like yeah, push your luck. A, yeah, it's a six. So it's, I love pushing it's your luck. I uh, big, uh, I recently played Raw and mm. I and I was 
I came down to the last uh, few tiles, and I was in second place, and I had to draw until I could pass the leader. Right. And so I stood up. I was slamming tiles on the table, <laughs> and then I lost horribly. So, but you know, I tried. I know, right? I finally have hit. So it was a bunch of boys, and then we all found girls. Looks like Rob. <laughs> and. Now yeah, Rob's overviewing his hand. Rob's got a mitt of cards. So, we, split into two games. so we know he has the Grackle. We yeah. know he has the Bald Eagle. No, because yeah. two of them have... I, I thought... You know he's got the yellow-headed uh, Warbler as well. Yeah. I mean, I would I would imagine that he is thinking about slamming the Grackle, but maybe something else? I just love it because it's like... Maybe he's laying eggs. TV, yeah. So it depends on his cup nests, right? If he could get within striking distance. But he distance. can't lay eggs on it, right? If he yeah. plays a bird here, it's the last action of the round. So I think he's going to get zero on the bonus regardless. Yeah. Um, it's a tuck, to, tuck and lay an egg. Or tuck and lay an egg. He's playing his, uh, he's playing his bird. Playing the grackle. Playing the grackle. Oh, no, playing the yellow-headed uh, no. warbler. No, that's not the yellow-headed warbler, is it? I think so, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's another... It's oh, basically no, yellow, the same as... Oh, no, uh, blackbird. Sorry, my, my Yes, my yeah. The, the warbler's just a eight points, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blackbird, and which... And it goes uh, up top. Points. So, Rob has got a good thing going here, because that... I mean, that's essentially the same as the bush tit and the grackle, uh, right? Yeah. It's... That's carbon copies. You tuck and get an egg. So if Rob can, Rob plays the grackle here as his fourth card, every time he goes down there, he draws three, then he tucks two of those to get eggs, and then he tucks another one to draw a card. So he's getting five points per cycle, and he gets to cycle a bunch of cards, right? Yeah. So I would imagine that what Rob wants to do here is play the grackle, find a fifth bird that scores a point, right? Mm -hmm. So it can either be something <laughs> that repeats one of those other well, cards or something else. Well or just that eagle. Uh, uh, or just drop the eagle, right? But yeah. then he can be getting five I, I, points every yeah. time he goes through that hey, wetland. Oh, mm -hmm. no, that's the bonus card again. Yeah. I will grab a wheat. And I will grab a... The, so Mitch is... is using that Chihuahuan Raven to great effect. Raven. Yes, nothing feels worse than your opponent just deciding what free resources to get. <laughs> well, I think that the other thing to think about is, like, in addition to the 17 other reasons the card is very good, you also don't have to get lucky with what you roll, right? Yeah. So, like, there's no luck. It's just like, I want this. I'd like yeah. that. And it's like, wow, okay, cool. The Chihuahuan Ravens, they just take what they want. <laughs> you know, Mike should have counterspelled... The Chihuahuan Raven. That probably would have been That's the best true. play. That would have been the, the best play. Yeah. 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 It is surprising. We have seen a sorry lack of counter spells being played in this game of Wingspan, but yes. maybe in round three. I'm a nerd. Random set. Perhaps. Makes me curious. I uh, I think I tried a counter spell in the Great Western Trail final, but you took it out in post production. So. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's too bad. I'm going to draw a card. I will draw a card. Okay, so what is that? That is, is he six. taking the... Six. Yeah, Mike scoops up the common Regancer. I'm going to get three... <clears throat> Interesting. Oh, uh, Roll all the dice, gain the, 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 the fishies. Oh, okay. So... so if I take that... Another Predator. It'd be worth five points, though, for him, but it doesn't match up with, uh, with a stick nest. I can't imagine four points. the world so I'm going all where that's... Three better than the egret because it's the egret is one less point but it takes one less food and they have the same ability and the yeah. egret is a stickness right uh yeah yeah i agree <laughs> but this is like so a, it's like bidding like i don't like the mercancer i'm trying to think if there's an end game bonus that maybe he's getting points for that he wouldn't get with the so snowy egret but if there's a common to one me, the or egret, it's might have been better there. Yeah. Well, he still hasn't finished his turn. He hasn't passed that little card to indicate the turn is done. But okay. And maybe he's going to draw an egret because he's going to activate his bonus right now. Thing draw bird. Which thing is that? The bottom. You and me. 
I got you. Either from the deck or. I'm going to draw that one. Oh. And it's Mike so takes the nine point. It's still mid turn, correct? It's still, yeah, yes, it doesn't refresh until the end of my turn. Yes. So he's taking the nine point woodcock, going, sticking to his theme of playing powerful birds that do not build an engine. Yeah. should have grabbed instead, but I had already made a choice. Ah! Yeah. Look at that. We hear Mike saying that, acknowledging that mistake. Everything for Marie. I mean, Mitch. Maria? Mitch has got to be happy with <laughs> getting a bird that matches two round bonuses. Yeah, and it's a four-point bird for one resource, and he got it free. For free. Yeah, this is a that's yeah. a really good get for Mitch. So we might see some dancing in Mitch's corner pretty soon because of that. I, I'm gonna be honest. I, Mitch doesn't seem like the dancing type. He looks like a, 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 a stoic, uh, a more stoic individual. But I don't know. A free snowy egret hitting the last two round bonuses for one food? I'd be dancing. I'd be dancing out of my tree. I, I well, I'm just surprised that we've got this far without anyone standing up. Cause I, I would have been out of my chair three times by now. Yeah. Um, if, if I was well, to be fair, table. maybe Maria and Rob have been standing, but. Uh, Ah, true. We, we don't true. have the we don't have the shot on them. I uh, so the um, what I was gonna say though is um, the birds that Mitch is really looking for. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a a boatload of resources, right, and what you really want to do is get the the um, birds that let you play another bird. The extra play birds, right? Because what's kill? What's he basically has infinite money or infinite yeah. resources, right? Yeah. So what he wa what he's constrained on is actions, right? Yeah. So if he can get the, um, I forget the name of the ones that that let you play multiple blue. I know in the middle row it's like the mountain blue bird. Yeah. But that's that would be beneficial for him, right? Because he'd like to play a lot. Oh. Rob's vulture is happy. Yeah. Everything's coming up, Rob. Like Maria's <laughs> been hitting on uh, most of her predators. Put him down. He hasn't rolled since then, by the way. Oh. He's in the. He's, he's in the doghouse. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially now that you got that raven. He ain't never gonna see the light of day. <laughs> Mike pointing out what we've been saying that uh, so there's no like reason for Mitchell to go back up to that top from, uh, food uh, action. Yes. Are you also? But oh, yeah. perhaps yeah, Rob can get uh, the snowy egret could could help Rob out. I mean, honestly, so that's in play. It is. No, it's not your fault at all. But it is that play of that vulture that is. I love that you're saying that when if you if I win this this card's in my thing and she's the one. It's, my, it's all my fault. Oh, no. <laughs> I like how you're saying it's your fault. If you I'm not saying it's your fault at all. Like you, that is absolutely a great move for you. Uh, but like that's that right, vulture right. plays. Yeah, yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Mike is uh, uh, utilizing a strategy uh, that I often utilize, which is blame game. others yeah, for, uh, <laughs> for my lack of success. So. <laughs> it's a good strategy. We've all employed it uh, one yes. time or other. I have zero. It's it's very closely coupled with the make sure no one thinks I'm winning. You know, uh, oh, yeah. I, oh I'm not doing anything. I assure you. I, don't worry, I'm out of the con co competition. Oh, you're, you're looking at my 28 points in birds laid down. No, no, no. If if they win, uh, I shouldn't be here. Yeah. But we see that happen. We see that those end game goals being scored. Uh, both uh, Mike and Mitchell tying again for first, which is great news for Maria and Rob. It, it sort of doesn't extend anyone's gap. And then Maria getting in on that uh, that second place and Rob not having any any bull nests. I'll be honest, I think I should probably buy a lottery ticket because as soon as I say something, it pops up on the screen here. I, I just <laughs> talked about that bluebird. Uh, That's true. Where you can play extra birds, and it it has showed up. So, um, uh, these so all three of these cards are good in their own right. Uh, so Clark's the nice thing about Clark's grabby or greeby grab mm -hmm. grab. I don't know how to say that, but I grieb. So I don't know. two couple things here. One, it's very efficient, right? Yeah. One fish for five point bird. That's great. That's huge. Um, it's a little late in the game for its ability to be super, super powerful. Um, but if you play this in round one, it's yeah. a star nest and you get to draw and discard cards a, a lot, which is awesome. Um, so it's kind of why I, like this I, I think 
something. I mean, it's probably a little too late for it to be like top, top, top tier, but it's a great yeah. card in general. So it's like nothing's uh, your fault. That's the kind of card I want in my opening I hand, like nine times out of ten. Right. Yeah. Now the chimney swift, another starbird, right? Which is, I mean, we've already got through one of the cup nests, so it's not as valuable now. Yeah. But that's another one in the early game. Really strong players can figure out how to use that. So like Maria could have had the one 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 she had, but have a chimney swift. Yeah. And he just, she just activates whatever she wants at two, and then bumps that guy around. That's pretty, uh, pretty neat play. Um. We see Mitchell going for it. Interesting, maybe to develop uh, develop his egg strategy and bounce that back and forth, and then have it end up in the water. Yeah, took both Clark's Clark's mm -hmm. Grebe, Clark's Greb. Doesn't go for the Eastern Blue Bluebird. It seems like Mitchell doesn't want to invest in that second row. That seems odd that he that he wouldn't grab that Eastern Bluebird. Um, so I. Well, I so I think that he, what he'd like to do is have all five of his I cards in his middle row have an ability. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the the bluebird does kind of kill a spot in the row that he's going to activate a lot. So right. I I tend to like to take the like play an extra bird thing uh, in the rows where uh, where um, I'm not gonna be going often because you're killing a spot right you're you're losing a brown ability by playing that bluebird yeah now the brewer's blackbird is another one of those tuck to get an egg cards right and right. But it, this one goes only in the yellow so um again a little bit more limiting because you may run out of cards unless you're rob right now i would say if you have a kill deer or a franklin skull which are the other two very very powerful cards where you're ditching an egg to draw cards. If you throw a Brewer's a Brewer's Blackbird right next to a Kill Deer, mm -hmm. you're just you're you're winning the game. Everyone else should concede and go home and just pack it up <laughs> because that's very that's powerful it. stuff. Yeah, it's a wrap. Um, but one issue though, I, I will say with these guys where they tuck a bird, or tuck a card and lay an egg on themselves is mm -hmm. once you activate them three times, they're full. Uh, right. and, and so you need to play birds or use those eggs in some other way. Um, but I think if, if Mitch can wheel this and get around, I would be shocked if he didn't draw the Brewer's Blackbird. Because if it's pretty well with his strategy, uh, yeah. uh, and I think that would be great for Mitch. It's got to get around to him, though. Because he did just yeah. take his first turn of the game. We're on mic right now. It's pretty good for... I mean, it's pretty good for everybody. Yeah. The Rob's not going to be going to the middle row very often at all. Yeah. Rob's already um, made that decision. Rob's yeah. locked in. So I don't think Rob will take it. Um, I... Um... Maria might take it. She could theoretically play Eastern Bluebird and the Blackbird, or so Mike takes them before Mike we even get them there. Both up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are very good cards. Um, and being able to play both together, uh, and then also so that dropping that Woodcock as the as another nine points, that would make yep. a a nice firm middle row for Mike. Instead. Oh, Mike asking if he can. He, he hasn't passed the. He hasn't passed his thing yet, realizing that he could have taken the second card with his common loon. He's going to get the benefit of me drawing that card. Sure. So, okay, so I will put one of those cards back. I'm going to take my egg back. So players with the fewest, I will draw this. Okay, so yeah, it benefits him. I can't Mike caught yeah. Mike caught his uh, Mike caught so. saved himself an egg by catching that yeah. in the nick of time. Uh, he, 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 and hey, that's a point. Could come down <laughs> yes. to that, right? You guys good to it could. State, state, so I can go. Yes. yes. Go. He's back. Well, I need to go. Anyway. 
So oh, the judge has asked if the players can maintain the game state. So here's uh, where the wheels I fall off. The, I did the draw <laughs> cards, so you get to pick Yeah, we a, have a couple cuts in here as we as we just don't get back to the draw cards. But you can think of whether or not you want one off the top or another one. So Mitch is so Mitch is you, uh, just drowning in riches here yeah, because yeah. his biggest weakness is Wait, cards. He's right. fine on eggs and because resources. And because he can't get, can't hit you to play that. So Mike is just saying, here you go, have There's the thing that I, you uh, need. Yeah. Um, I imagine he's that. taking the card off the top because the Carolina Wren is a very good early play to kind of mm -hmm. get your engine going and get a cheap bird out there that replaces itself. But card you're gonna pick? A one point bird right now is. It's not good. That's not what you yeah. want. At this yeah, point, if, if yeah. Mike is is hurting for for cards, he there could be a world in which he would have valued that. But again, only one point to draw two cards. It just doesn't feel like that exciting. Yeah. Now, I mean, yeah. Sometimes you play it because it fits your requirement uh, for mm -hmm. your bonus card and different things. But I would say it's the ship has somewhat sailed on that. Okay, now the Bobo link came up. So, um, mm -hmm. ironically, I was I played a game against Rob within the last month online where I played a Bobo link, laid five eggs, and stole the round bonus out from under him, and it was quite uh, epic. So I don't know if that weighs into his decision from several months ago, but um, <laughs> it might. It might. You might feel know? the ripples through time. Yeah. Um, so well, that it is so, stick nest, isn't it? It is no. I think it's. I think it's uh, the small, oh, small eggs. eggs. Net. Yeah, whatever that one's called. So yeah, those cards. I think when my first few plays were underrated, right? Um, because not only can they lay on their their type of nest, but they can also lay on star nests. Mm. And a lot of times, players are, you know, good players are counting. Okay, I have this many nests. You have this many. Here's how many eggs we have. More so for like the total number of eggs in those kind yeah. of nests or whatever. But you can set up a play where you can come in and steal the round bonus with a card like Bobo Link. Um, but also, if you just have like five nests of that type, okay. yeah. it's it's it makes itself a nine point bird, right? It's it, instead of because you know it's four and then you lay five eggs, so that's you can turn that into a nine point card pretty mm -hmm. easily. Um, we do see no. Maria is uh, is drawing cards here, and Maria did opt to get that Carolina Wren, maybe going for one of her bonus cards. Or maybe oh, just it's a cheap thing yeah. to get it down into the game food <laughs> oh, in order to be able to, to catch up and get that two <laughs> yeah. dice of food. Wait, you found a hawk? I mean, she's in the... She needs to... Um, <laughs> she needs to get more cards in play. Well, at this point, she needs cheap the cards, whether like, they're perfect or not. She, she's <laughs> got to get more cards so she can <laughs> get more benefits. Whose hawk does that yeah. really belong Come to, on. that foul game? Whom does the hawk belong? Flavored. Saying gonna, the, the one time it wouldn't have mattered if uh, the Falcon had hit, which usually hits, because Rob had his uh, in-between rounds still happening just because of the turn order, because Rob started last time, and then Mitchell started this time, and he had to wait a longer time to, to clear that that vulture. Yes, oh, we totally yes, you, do. You, you do. So Rob has really elected to play. It's not nearly as yes. game-breaking in the yes. tucking in state if bird yeah, if that mm -hmm. in person. the middle row. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's that yellow rumped warbler we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Much yeah, I think we're one action in the three, but no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, dear sweet Jesus. <laughs> so... A potty break really slow to Rob's stop. laugh is infectious. <laughs> if you've never met Rob, he's got a great <laughs> laugh. Uh... It was I, uh, <laughs> sequential too. It wasn't uh, simultaneous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go like this. Okay. Uh, before Good. Mitch does his bird time. here, stop, stop I'm a little surprised Rob mean, played his bird in the middle row oh, and didn't yeah. just go in the bottom <laughs> row. Mm -hmm. So uh, he must uh, be planning uh, to yeah, go so Grackle and and, and Bald Eagle. And Eagle, and, yeah. And so he wanted to play it in the middle row, but I can't imagine he's going to take that middle row action that often. So. We'll see. Well, he still needs to get the eggs in order to yeah, to play right. those birds later on, right? <laughs> the first part of my trip in the yeah, but he can get them by discard by tucking cards, right, right. off of his yellow-headed. Yeah. 
Um, so Mitch has else. Mitch dropped the is that the Greeby the yeah I think yeah. that's the, the five pointer. Yeah, Clark Greeb. Not making mistakes. Okay. I am. That's good. That puts Mitch at twenty points in birds laid down. Yeah, I I really like Mitch's setup here. Yeah. Um, he's he's got a powerful and middle row. Nine, nine eggs. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, I think uh, him, and, neck him and, and Mike neck. are are exactly the same based upon eggs and cards. I think Mike might have one more point because of that one food on the Blue Jay. Yeah. Did they finish? No, they're on break. They're on break. Okay. I was like, dang. I really thought we'd be done before them. And a wheat. Worth oh, noting that this is uh, this like is one of the last games played. Like at not WSBG, here. this was so Wednesday. Um, yep. This is late Earth in the evening. So They've been playing Wingspan all day. So uh, a, a huge, a huge PPN. marathon of an event. So Mike is taking food and cashing. He has fully committed to the cash angle with mm -hmm. his, uh, which I think is correct at this point. You got to yeah. score points. Uh, Are you on rails? I. Uh, I did a video recently where I was talking about action economy and you really can't afford too many zero point actions because that's, you know, other people right. are scoring points. You're not scoring points. Um, so I think he's smart to choose to at least get one point off of kind of the necessary evil of taking food. Where can uh, people find this video, Jeff? Uh, I have started a YouTube channel, Chris. Uh, so I'm. It's at Meeple Maven. Maybe you can throw that up under Amazing. my face when yeah, we I'll, when we I'll edit this. I'll do it at the so. beginning. I'll do it at the yeah. beginning for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna so, so mostly focus oh, on WSBG time. games, but um, do a little bit of general strategy and then kind of do deep dives on games. I've, like one of the first sets of videos I'll do is some Ark Nova like maps uh, <laughs> Again. You know, like, well, here's here's a map what should you do that kind of stuff yeah. <laughs> give it a little so back to the task at hand promo card of big bird maria has oh okay so maria drew Thematic cards but then she the rolled the dice um because of her woodpecker. If it runs yeah. in fear from a bird and, bigger than and 100 missed. Then yeah did not hit no, did not hit that wheat now unfortunately for maria the uh the dice are not in her favor. It <laughs> is looking like her dreams of winning a ring <laughs> are slipping sesame away. Seeds. Wow. Sesame yeah, we can really see that she's hurting for the good. tempo. We're seeing, yeah. seeing the other players all kind of keeping pace with each other. Rob Mitchell and Mike feeling pretty, pretty even depending upon where their strategies are going. Yeah, I mean, I think I would... If I if you had told me to take over a player right now, I would probably choose Mitch. Yeah. If I had to, um, I probably so would Rob, as well. Rob's laying eggs. Oh, this should be real, I suppose. Yep. So. I'm not used to cards being upside down. Yeah. So. Is it better right. if I'll we don't do that. that? I'll stop doing that. Then, <laughs> if you're used to looking and yeah, seeing, the point of it is to not forget, and it causes the forgetting. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. That's what's causing yeah, you to forget. Can, I'll yeah, stop. we can stop yeah. that. No problem. Sorry. No. Trying to help no. each other and ending up lost. causing more problems. So. Really yeah. looking yeah. up I mean, it's it's easy to forget these little things, right? It, yeah. You do it yeah, in every game, true. and like, especially after you've been playing board games, you know, for four days straight and twelve hours on the last day. Yep. It's pretty easy to forget to refill the bird feeder, but it shouldn't affect Rob's uh, choice. It's a it's a forest bird, solely forest, an owl, which and only worth three points. It's not going to be anything that Rob's going to lose sleep over. Yeah, I mean, I think Rob's Rob's game plan here is uh, play the grackle. Mm -hmm. Play the bald eagle, and then just get five points per turn, but. If if Mitch or Mike can stumble into a way to to score more points per turn on average, we might might uh, Rob might come up close, but just a tad shy. Um, yeah, it, Mitch is making also a play. I think he, Mitch is playing that snowy egret that he got gifted by yep. Mike, and now Mitch is tied for that uh, that final end of round goal plus mitch yeah. has got a ton of uh with that egret he's got another stick nest to add to his repertoire yep. 
the thing so one thing I'll notice if it when the when the bonuses come out for the end of game bonus there if you get a yes, sir, one of the rows sure. as the fourth round bonus mm -hmm. it's almost right. always going to be a tie it's very very likely to be a tie or right. sometimes a three-way tie um so that makes it obviously you need to be involved in the tie if you want the points but it's harder to bank on getting seven points out of it. You're often going to split the points, which can be a little problematic um, if you count on that as an advantage because you the tie gets you less of an advantage. Yeah. Now they've they're called sledge worms and squiggles. So, so to all Mike's friends out there, be prepared. There's a trick question at game night. You have two answers now that are legal answers. So Mike's drawing is that what is that what I heard? I don't see his cube though. Oh no, he's he's in the middle of the grasslands action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been taking eggs. Everybody oh, got a oh. got a worm. He's deciding on if he what resource to take with to pitch the egg for. Or just in between. Mike does have a nice hand of cards still waiting yeah. to be played, right? Mike did scoop up that uh, that double grassland that he's probably saving up for. Yep. I so Mitch might be thinking about. I mean, the sparrow's not bad. Uh, if Mitch is planning on building that engine in the middle, right? Because it is a one. Like I was saying earlier, he wants to get one bird that gives him points. Oh, I didn't realize he didn't design. But okay, got you, got you, got you. Mitch might be pivoting into a bottom row engine here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's hard to say what Mitch is Oh, it's thinking. 11. They're pulling right now. What are you playing? He's probably thinking, I'm hungry. I'm tired. When will so this end? I want to win, but I'm so also hungry. So they the first one, and they're like, okay, the winner of Ark Nova, you're on table two. Mike's talking the about uh, the, Nova, the players chip. being worried yeah, that they're, they'll and miss the draw the of the finals. Uh, the draw is held until the players finish. Yes. Yeah, someone's yes. going to pull the wingspan. In order so that uh, know everybody knows at the same time what game they're yeah, no, playing in the semifinals of the main event. I wish if I won a game, it would be okay. It was a very um, heartbreaking uh, draw this year because I was sitting next to Nick Henning and he and I. Uh, both lost in the Great Western Trail final, and so, but the player who won, Great Western Trail was drawn for uh, to play at the Arc Nova semifinal, and Nick and I had both trained for Arc Nova extensively. Right. And Nick got to the finals, and I got to the semifinal in Arc Nova. So we were we would have been living the dream. Uh, yeah. But unfortunately, did not. So. Like I said, this, this is up to you people. And you have how many, sorry? I got one. And you have I'm not competing. Two, including the well. Okay. They're counting up the bonuses for stick nests. Maybe you guys work together. We can catch up. Mitch, okay. Mitch has to be in first on stick nests, right? Yeah. He's got all, all three in the bottom row are sticks. Yeah. And all it takes is one lay eggs action, which is kind of Mitch's favorite action to do with that. Chihuahuan Raven. Yep. Although it, he's really quickly developed that yeah, wetlands okay. row, really impressively how quickly that, that pulled together, all starting with that bush tit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and he got that free snowy egret as a gift. Mm -hmm. There's something to be... Just relax. It kind of relies on the others at the table. Your badger is like perfectly what I need. <laughs> Perfect. I'm glad I'm making your life more convenient. The last I, I think like you might be getting a shout out. Um, Mitch this. saying that uh, Mike's playing like you. <laughs> yeah. Jeff. Uh, oh, I look at that. I'm a nice guy. You're a nice guy. It said That's behind like your back. A compliment him. behind your back. Yeah. Wow. Be. I don't remember. So your action was. All right. Play the bird. We should probably Play commentate the bird. on the video and not just talk about how awesome I am. Um, <laughs> it's tough. It comes up a lot, Jeff. Of course. It's it's a tough. It's a it's a burden I live with, Chris. You know. Um, a burden. So, a burden. Yeah. 
That was accidental. I promise. <laughs> I didn't even plan on that, but the tally's at two. Tally's at two. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but the rest so is Mitch deciding what to draw here? Yeah, I'm finally at a spot I, I ask a question? Sorry, I removed the wrong egg. Is it too late? I guess I passed that. Yes, so, yeah. passed okay, fair enough. Sorry. It's all good. So things getting more difficult for, for Maria. Again, that yes. that long oh, day yeah. taking its toll. Like all of these, of these players, players these again, super quick, regardless of how they're how they're shaping they're up players. in like, terms of the pace of this game, like, all these players, players are fantastic up. players of this game. They've yeah. made their way through so many rounds, and like just making it to this yeah. final right, final table is a huge, yeah. huge accomplishment that all four should be incredibly proud of. Yes, I mean, I two people talk I've been a little critical, but I mean, she. You get five cards in your starting hand, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes all five of those cards are expensive, yep. crappy things that you don't want. Uh, and so that's the nature of this game, right? You can only do so much. Yep. Um, well, I'm to I, right now, I think, in terms of yeah. whose turn it is. I'm interested, though, because because Maria wanted to lay, an, or she wanted to take that egg off of a different bird, but it's on a star nest bird, so I can't imagine why it would matter too much. Right. Oh, there is one, I think, maybe on the Peregrine Falcon. It might be blending oh, yeah, I just can't the, see. Okay. It might be blending into the wings, or I'm. Uh, that's the only other possibility of where it could be. The coolest thing is that. Like, uh, Rob is not uh, slamming the grackle down it with authority, game. so that is surprising to me. But maybe it's uh, because of I the end game the or end of round bonus. Yeah, I can't. Like, I can't imagine he's doing anything but playing the grackle here. But we'll see. He might be working out just in terms of using that uh, end of round bonus to get the eggs needed to to be competitive. Yeah, he's his hands hovering over that two egg spot. It feels like here comes to grackle. Well, yeah, I mean the bald eagle does fit the round goal. I don't remember. Did we decide the grackle does fit the round goal? I think the grackle does fit the round goal. I'll I'll, okay. I'll check. Well, now is not the time to play the bald eagle because you only get one fish. So I think he's oh, playing no, the grackle. Oh no, the grackle had the uh, the bowl. So gr yeah. the grackle is actually uh, not important for the end of round goal anymore. But he still wants to play the grackle. Yeah. So. <laughs> Three fish, though, for the bald eagles, tough. That is not, and unless you're sitting on a raven, it is challenging to get three fish because yeah. uh, fish, fish and rats uh, are much more difficult to get than the other stuff. Um, so, yeah, bald eagle's not an easy card to play. Yeah. And but you it's get also value out of it. Yeah, I mean it's nine points though. So exactly, and at this point too, if you don't have any other cards that need fish, sure you can convert two fish for a wild and give yourself a little bit of efficiency there. But um... so this is the, the uh, this was kind of the um, perplexing play from earlier when. Uh, Mitch took the chimney swift, which is he's one that flies from row to row. Yeah. So, first of all, I don't know that that's what Mitch was looking for, because I think Mitch should be looking for things that score points, like because he wants to just slam his engine and score points. So that's I would I would prefer I would have preferred that he took something like that sparrow, right? Something that gets yeah. him points, right? And flying around. It's not oh, that it was, it was valuable like, to me right no, now. The it. second strike against it is that it, it costs two okay. food oh. for three points, right? Yeah. If you're if you're the Raven guy, you want to be dropping nine point birds or birds that give you incremental value. Like you have a bunch of food, so you want to be playing, you know, big heavyweight yeah. birds like the bald eagle, like the uh, the woodcock that we saw earlier, right? You want to be dropping bombs and yeah. not little sure. swifts you know um so this is a bit dubious here i mean obviously it helps him with the round goal and i think that's kind of what he's thinking about because it has that star nest but it's not a very efficient conversion of resources to points yeah we see now, mike extend that second row yeah mike's going for the mike's just going to get his yellow card engine going and 
just go for it. Um, it took me six weeks this year and to learn all my secret that's, names. He's got so whatever bird that is that uh, is I'd essentially like a, a another oh, grackle no. slash bush mm -hmm. tit, another one of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can see the power yeah, of that crazy. type There's of like bird where you tuck and get an egg. Um, crazy, Someone tried like, to in mine and missed the fact that the, it was the wrong habitat for the third one. <laughs> so funny, one other thing to note here, um, so when you're playing a bird like the chimney swift, like Mitch just did, if you're ever playing it in a future game, think about he just Still played two eggs to put it in the fourth column, Yeah. right? He could have played one egg, put it in a um, different column, and then activated it and then moved it down to the bottom column. Better. So, yeah, you know, if if he takes any action There's other than draw standing. cards right now, then I would <laughs> yes, chalk that up I mean, as a slight misplay there. because you would want to have that bird uh, play one good. less egg. It's one more point in the long run, and then you could still move it down to the blue later. Yeah. Um, I think Mitch right. must be really <laughs> just hoping to draw some big so bird cards at this point, standing. right? Making that, like uh, making yeah, that choice to right. knowing he wants to draw three cards yeah. either way. So he would have to pay an egg for it, or uh, and if he wanted to draw uh, three of the chimney sweep and place anywhere else, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it could be a wash. It could be a wash, but yeah, I don't know. But yeah, also just placing it in that four. But I think we did hear Mitch say, "Oh, hey, do I have to place it in this row?" And the judge saying, "Well, you did place your." Your cube there, so yes. Oh, okay. Like you've decided you were you were going to that row. So I think Mitch did have some regrets, um, yeah. but it was too late. So he realized it two seconds too late. Yeah. yeah. We've all been there. He's gonna draw bird cards, and that uh, that ability resolves with no counter spell. So we are drawn cards. Okay, three off the top, it appears. Yeah, it doesn't seem... The Bobo Link will haunt Rob later on, but uh, he's not going for it uh, Not going for it now. I think it would only get him three eggs. Yeah. So... Tuck an egg, so he's... We see so, this great yep. engine now developing by, by Rob. So basically get to draw four, murder yourself, keep two of them, and, play it for the next and get five points is what days, Rob's got set up, right? Which like, is which is beautiful I thing. I was in a rush. Like, um, there's a very different feel between this table and the other, like the early ones. Now, if if you're ever you know thinking at home, okay, I'm going to try this tuck bird strategy in my next game of wingspan. The, in a perfect world, that first bird that Rob has not been doing. Too much with yeah would be another tuck bird, right? And then you fill the fifth slot with another tuck bird. Then you've got yourself up to uh, you know seven points per action, and yeah. you get to look at a lot of cards, right? But that's that's the ideal. But um, anything you want can never get there. Or is it from the bird feeder? No, it's from I think we see Rob take that take that egg off uh, in order to get. Get some food. It looks like so. It does activate that ability. Ah, for, there we go. For one of the first well, times, though, he has been skipping that pretty frequently. Well, it, it's good though because, like I said, those those the bush tit type birds can mm -hmm. fill up uh, with uh, with eggs, right? And so he can use that to get resources. So it's it actually fits in the engine well. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. Can I see your one off the top. There, he can't see. Another one off the top. Like, this just, is the fifth uh, action, uh, so there should be uh, two more actions from everybody. If my no, uh, one more. One more, right? Oh, yeah, so one more. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And then we get to six. There should two be more, six this round. not including <laughs> Mitchell, because Mitchell was first player. So everybody else has two. This will be Mitchell's yep. penultimate action. I'm just glad the camera's on this side. This is my good side. It's not this side. <laughs> I can't imagine. I mean, Mitchell could. I can't see his resources. I don't think he has the resources for the Bobo Link this round. So uh, he's. Yeah, he's sitting. He might on be a wheat thinking about that sparrow. Yep, yep. No, drawing one off the top. Okay. Anyway, Crystal. That's what got me into magic. Yeah. Um, Mitchell also checking for that counter spell. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah we'll just see that chimney sweep bounce back and forth <laughs> between eggs and. Uh, Please, that one over that one over would have rolled you five rats. <laughs> True. Uh, Grieb draw and then start at the end of the turn. All right, so Mitch does not look super happy with what he's drawing, but he's going to get another chance, I think, with the uh, with the bush tip. No, he won't get another draw, but he will get an egg. He will get so, an egg, which at this stage of the game, too, with uh, Mitch only has one more turn left in this round. Everyone else has two more turns because Mitch was starting player for this round. Nope, discard. Yep. I said I'm not going to forget the Joseph and now you're going to let me forget, and I forgot it. <laughs> so it looks I mean, like Mitch is going to be locked into uh, laying eggs X action to get hand. the uh, to get no. the round bonus. So he will have to yeah pretty much guarantee go to that middle row, which is I mean that's the row he wants to be going to most of the time, anyways. Uh, I think so. And it'll be interesting too. I don't see how he. He doesn't spend the food to get the additional egg on his next turn, too, to get those four eggs. Because then Chihuahua and Raven can just turn that egg into two food. So he's still net one. But I guess it depends on his plans. He's still sitting on uh, a couple cards that he would want to add. Yeah, I. so one of the problems that I sometimes have when I'm when I'm planning on a, like a heavy grassland strategy is mm -hmm. I fill up my birds. Um, you know, I'll I'll regularly end yeah, games you, where I have like 36 think? out of 36 eggs, uh, and right. I can't get full value on the last action. Yeah. Um, and so, but he doesn't look like he has that problem. Although, he does have three birds with pretty small, actually four birds. It looks like with two egg slots. So that's yeah. But Bush Tit still holds five. Morning Dove still holds five. True. So he has, what, 5, 10, 16, 18, 20, 26, maybe? 24, 24. Yeah. He'll be fine. We see Mike immediately go into the grasslands and just kind of blaze through it. Everybody's everybody's getting that worm as well, which also benefits uh, Mitchell because now he has the food for that additional egg and, doesn't, and can convert it into two food of whatever he wants. If he was so needing you, to hold on to that, like uh, that wheat and cherry that he's holding up top, it, it looks like he yeah, yeah, skipped the blackbird, so he must like uh, the one. two cards he has. Um, Mine has not changed, I believe. Or I think Mike might be deciding right now. Does he give everybody a worm? I think he didn't. I think he didn't. I think he opts not to. <sighs> That's a tough decision. I mean. Uh, so he doesn't necessarily need the worm. Yeah, he he's has got, a lot of food. He's got a lot. And Mitch, I mean, at this point, he's probably identified that Mitch is his largest competition. Um, and so largely, you know, if you if you've identified that the game is between you and another player, you know, you can largely ignore the fact that the food might help Rob. Right, I mean, de yeah. depending on how close it is, you know, I think it he's does mainly feel pretty close, though. It, yeah, this. So I said I was going to trash. This an is egg. still anyone's I game. It does not look like I Mike has added in. everyone's scores cool. uh, and is keeping very close. Uh, yeah. Close track of that. Um, it is yeah. still round three, but I think I was uh, when I won this event, I was uh, adding up the scores. Uh, throughout rounds two and three and keeping a running total in my head so call me right. crazy on that one but uh, <laughs> well if, mike uh, might be doing the same you, you both have a similar uh Sorry. chatty relax everyone around the table yeah. attitude and, but mike's been keeping mike's been keeping track way. there was that <laughs> time when he said to rob <laughs> okay. oh okay this is great that'll uh, discount the nine points that rob's gonna get so he yeah. he kind of Showed that he is he is doing tracking. I think everybody around this table is doing some level of tracking. You know, it, it's kind of built in at this point. If you make final table, you you just kind of do it. Yeah. So she is gonna get some food here. Getting some food. Um, and we I saw think, that pink card uh, flash across the table. That was a discard, even though the perspective looked like it was being passed to Maria. That's just because of the flipped player boards. As we've talked about, and Maria, 
Maria finally got a bird that I would have liked to see in her green row uh, first, yeah. which is that tuck a bird, uh, draw a card. That That's like an ideal starting play because it, it gives you card selection, right? You can snag good stuff out of the tray. Yeah. And it gives you a point when you go through your green row. Um, so that, you know, if you flip flop that with the with the uh, expensive bird she played at the start, I think would have would have worked a little better for her. Um, but she's taking a look at her options now. All, right, all players lay an egg on a and bird. she's doing a, a, a what's it called the 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 community woodpecker yeah. ability where gone, everyone gets eggs. Okay. But only if they have it on the on a star bird or a yeah. uh, so I'll take, and then I can a tree bird, but I think it looks like everybody has it. So one thing, uh, kind of going back to what I was saying about uh, filling up the, the nests, right, is if you can set up a situation where the other players are going to basically fill themselves up, mm -hmm. then you can get that to the point where they they aren't getting value, and then you're getting two value, uh, you know, and they're getting zero instead of you getting two, them getting one. So something, if everyone's going egg, 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 that guy can get a little bit extra value there. I just yes. triggered an effect that impacts you. What? Which is, you can lay Mike, an egg uh, on a Mike went to the restroom and got benefited for it. So oh, that's, that's that one. It's always a good Final feeling when you books. came back with a <laughs> <laid> <laughs> nice egg. Come back from that. Tree birds, man. They are tree birds. <laughs> Cavity. I'm like, I don't know. You tell me. Players like, are arguing over what to call the uh, what to call the um, the birds. Or the I nests. think I call them. Cup nests, uh, yeah. egg nests, which is definitely not what they're supposed to be called, <laughs> uh, and stick. I, th I don't know if anyone calls them anything but stick nests. Uh, yeah, I call them stick. That's the common. And then uh, what's the last one? It's uh, oh, ca they were saying cavity. I yeah, I, just I call, call them tree it nests. Tree I think. or hole in a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, the, the one that I call egg nest is a uh, ground nest, which mm. I don't know that anyone knows that because no one calls it that. <laughs> but it is for some, like the, some owls lay their, uh, lay their eggs in the ground. I've seen uh, a few of those owls before. They're pretty cool. The burrowing owls. Yeah, so Rob is playing a bird, and by the placement of his cube, it looks like it's going to be in the yellow row. Yep. Is this going to be the Grackle? No, he's already played the Grackle. He's played the Grackle. Uh, we know right. the Eagle's got to go down as his final bird. Hmm. So this is a... Ah. <laughs> <draw. Woo>! <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying we can be taught. That's what I'm learning here. Rob impressing table, everyone. Third round. We finally know how to move a cube. With his yeah. prowess, his cube moving prowess. At least prowess. once. He does. <laughs> yeah. At least once, one of us so, has learned. I've seen other people do it, too. Rob now has... Uh, so, so I like to count up, you know, when I'm looking at a game and looking at the other players, it's... In the last round, right, it all comes down to points per action, right? We're all mm -hmm. going to get the same number of actions. And so, you know, if you play a nine-point bird, right, the, about the best you can do is um, eight or nine points, or seven or eight points, right? If you yeah. if you play it in your fourth or fifth column, you lose two eggs, you get nine points. That's the best you can do. Uh, I guess, theoretically, you could play a bird that gives you a bonus card and happen to get lucky. Maybe you get a six or seven point bonus that then 10 or 11 is the absolute best you can do. Yeah. So if you can create an action that doesn't require playing birds yep. that gets you six or seven okay, I'd like to points, say I did not then touch it. you're doing you still great. Messed up? I'll get, I'll get you stop playing so people. <laughs> what I'm always trying to do is think, okay, well, let's see yeah, how my, you know, how many points per no, no, action no, is no. each person yeah, we're getting. All yeah. Rob, and I thought about putting one there, and I was like, no. Rob could go to the it. bottom row and essentially get Congratulations on five final points table. because he'll I was not just looking for tuck a, a three cards for that, but... and then lay two eggs and draw a card. You said so that's, was that's a five-point like, action like, in the yeah. bottom yeah. row. The most. Yeah. And then oh, he that. currently yeah. has, uh, yeah. in the second row, he could lay three eggs, which is three points, and then the, both of those birds tuck. Yes. So, so he's got a five-point middle row and a five-point bottom row. Yeah, it's going to fly down south. 
Yeah, he's now so taking the time five. to develop that middle, which is yeah. which is nice. But then you also have to think uh, with only Rob with that play playing that bird down. He has that was his seventh last action of the of the game. Because so he's one more this time, and then five in the final round. Right. So does that oh, does that even out to, yeah. to more than ahead, more than thirty five? Right. Yeah, I mean That's we know so beat. we know that we know that he's going to play. Uh, He's going to get a seven-point turn with the bald eagle, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the problem I see here is he doesn't have the fish for the bald eagle, right? So if let's say let's say he needs to go to the top row once, right, and score zero points and then play the bald eagle, right? Then in that case, those two out two actions get him nine points or seven points because he loses the egg. So so those are three and a half points each for those two actions. Yeah. Now we're not taking into account the the um, the bonus cards that might be relevant here, but you know that if you if you break it down like that, the the average looks a little less good. Now, I think in Rob C, what I might have considered is playing that tuck bird into the bottom row, mm -hmm. and then now he's created a six point bottom row, uh, and he gets to continue looking at a lot of cards. So and he could potentially like find a eight or nine point I mean, bird or a draw new bonus thing. cards bird Thank to play yeah. in the top the two rows because he's looking at so many cards. Later. Yeah. So then he's getting six, 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 six on the bottom row and continuing yeah, to fish for an eight or nine point bird. I can learn or something too. that gives the bonus cards and hope to pull like a big bonus. Yeah. I mean, if you think about like a, a four point really bird, when you draw two bonus cards, you're very likely to get something that scores you three or four points with, you know, what the birds he has. So you're hoping it's seven. Um, right. We've spent a lot of time on Rob. I don't even know whose turn it is now. Uh, it's Maria's uh, turn right now, who's okay. laying eggs. And I think that's also re relevant to Rob's strategy, just to touch on it before we go into the, before we leave him, uh, because Rob still has that black vulture. And so Maria laying eggs, if she makes good on her owl, that's also a potential way that maybe Rob is hoping he can get he can get resources from the black vulture. I think there's a fish in the bird feeder right now, and he well, also might be hoping that Mike uses uh, and and supplies him with an extra worm for a wild, which there's a chance where he can just wait it out and get the resources he needs. But I I do like the the alternative option that you presented with that six point turn and also searching for for large things. Yeah, I don't. Uh, well, yeah. This is we did skip over Mike's turn though. Mike had laid eggs, and then Mike played the woodcock as his last, uh, his last round, filling out that grasslands, and the woodcock being worth that, those nine points. So Mike getting. Uh, Laying That's eggs, right. converting some into food, I think, right. and then <laughs> being of course able to you get that seven-point turn. Okay. Mike yeah. starting to pick up the pace yeah. a little as well, hitting that eighth yeah. bird, where yeah. all him, Rob, and Mitchell all tied with eight birds. And the, the black vulture makes Whoa. good, though. When you win by one, oh. you what, those bad boys. So he's going to get a fish. And he's going to get a fish. Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> so Mike had an interesting choice there, which I don't think... Well, I don't know that he even thought it was an interesting choice, right? Because it... it the obvious thing is, okay, I'm going to finish out my yellow row and call it a day, a right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. He yes. did have the option of playing it <laughs> into the green. It's like, it's like we're, we're all right. over. And so what happens there is he spins one less egg, right? So it's, you yeah. get one yeah, the, sure, the I'm sure that 12 to 1 is really my point, sweet spot which is good. Yeah. of and optimizing uh, efficiency. You, part of the you don't have the option of paying your food yeah. away That's to get a eggs, but if like, one, he could snack one more yellow bird, then potentially he could have played something better, right? Like another tuck bird or something else that gets him one point, and then and then he could make up the uh, you know, make up the points that he's losing from trading his food in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the last card in his hand is. I think it was a little bit easier. But he literally went from semis to finals. And, and these are razor thin like, margins, right? Yeah. Some, this is the one point or, you know, potential for one point kind of plays here at the end where, yeah. uh, I almost want to wait for you know, what, in uh, games that are very close, it can make the difference. 36 plus and 7 wonders uh, is a lot less intimidating yeah. than 144 wingspan. Exactly. I passed this, though, it's not to him. Yeah. Yes, this will go to you after. Because if you think about it, 
There's um, no way that he can take one. the middle Nothing action and lay I five one. eggs five times. That'd be 25 eggs, and I don't believe he has right. room he on the birds in play, so he has to play another bird. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, he no, wants to play another over bird anyways. Stars, um, the stars are carrying. Thank you. Yeah, three stars are real. Nice. So I'm we'll see. We'll see what what birdie uh, plays in the future. But I think if he has a bird that could go in yellow, it might have been a misplay uh, to play that one there and instead of the green. But we right. we, sh we shall see how it develops. And we see the end of round goals. We see the first you know, non-tie. Really uh, Mitchell coming in uh, first. Uh, again, his third first position. <laughs> and Mike coming in last in the end of round goals. Second and Maria picking up third. So Red is happy to finally uh, not share the points. That's, yeah. uh, and in this round, it really matters because I believe first gets six and second gets four. No, second gets two. Two. Uh, I'm, I'm literally figuring out my oh, yeah. five so turns. If you tie, you go down from, you know, you lose kind of two points, which is pretty significant. Yeah. So, um... Mike's saying okay, he's so going to slow down a little. He's going to figure out his four to five turns. He's got to work through that process. That's kind of what it comes down to in this last round, right? You want to make yeah. sure that everything you do is working towards the maximum points that you can get. So, yeah. So if you're building an engine in the middle row, like Mike has done here, right? The, the, the ideal case is that you have enough eggs. And so you can just hit that middle row five times. And you just go boom, 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 boom. Give me my 27 or... Uh, sorry, seven times five. Give me my 35 points, you know, uh, for my yeah. five eggs and tucking cards every time. Give me my 35 points and I'm going to win, right? Yeah. That's that's easy mode. Uh, a lot of the times, if you either don't have enough uh, eggs on your birds or you still need to get your end game bonus, you might need to lay three times play a bird and then lay a fourth time which is if you run into that like all my birds are full situation which i think he has here he's probably gonna go lay 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 i'm gonna throw an egg plant or not plant uh that's a different game uh lay 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 play a bird and then lay one last time to fill up that last bird that's what i anticipate happening and then the uh, but we shall see. Birds. Or he's drawing yeah. cards. Uh, he's so drawing I'm cards. Completely right. wrong. Yeah, I know that. That one common loop stopped well, helping him. Well, potentially, if he's got the food <laughs> to do it, the now. great blue heron you, being you, up there you. could allow him to play a second card into the water. It might snag some, like a third place bonus. He does take that great blue heron, so he could and do it, a double play. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, he took the Franklin's Gold just out of principle, I think. It's because it's a very powerful card. Um, but I don't think anyone's really interested in it at this point, because uh, it's a little late. Now, if if you haven't played a lot of Wingspan, or even if you have, you've been sleeping on the Bronze Cowbird. Uh, the, the Bronze Cowbird and its um, strictly better counterpart, which is the other cowbird sure. i don't know what type of cowbird right, it is well, but the the cheaper one there's a cheaper version that does the same thing but um in games where your opponents are going to be laying eggs a lot which is most games of the base game that card it basically reads get one point every turn you yeah. know for the last round and so that's an all-star early in the game uh, yeah, as the long brown as you have a uh, cowbird only costs one wheat and it's worth three yes. points, whereas the bronze cowbird costs one wheat and one sludge worm uh, and uh, is worth five points. Yeah, I mean, if, if that's your, you know, if you could play like a star nest bird, an ch inexpensive star nest and a uh, and then the cowbird, uh, you know, you could potentially if you play that in round one, you could get 15 eggs off right. of that, you know, if everything goes right. Now, obviously, the, you know, and it, so let's let's take the other side of the coin. If your opponents are playing pink cards, you need to find the opportunity to do the action when they won't get the benefit. So if you know, mm -hmm. if I'm playing, if someone's playing a cowbird against me, as soon as I see him get the benefit from the guy or gal in front of me, that's I'll immediately you, take that eggs. lay eggs yeah. because my window's open. You know, so um, there hasn't been a lot of pink cards this game. 
Uh, whereas last year, because it was a five-player final, there was a lot. Or in 2022, um, there was a there was a lot of pink cards right. because of the five-player setting. So. And do you find that, especially even just the difference between four and five, it's pretty significant in terms of the amount of pink cards played? I mean, I I certainly uh, I certainly think so. I mean, it's a you know what is it a thirty. 30- 30% increase in the number of other of actions being taken, right? Um, so that's pretty significant. Um, I I went into the finals of last year thinking, okay, if I get a pink bird, I want to, I would like to play it. Um, and I, I thought you were if I recall correctly, I played the, uh, the, the pink bird that gets fish when your opponents play in the blue uh, row. Um, right. And then I had the other one where I could tuck, and I believe I tucked. I, I want to say I tucked six or seven cards off of the the yellow pink powered bird, and and then I got at least five or six fish without ever having to go to the top row. So pretty powerful stuff. And I think it, maybe I'm wrong. No, I think I'm wrong. I I was misinterpreting that Rob's. Uh, second row action gave him six points, but I think it's both draw and I thought this maybe a second was uh, similar to so to Bush to so, tuck and tuck yeah. and lay an egg, but I don't believe it so, is. I think that uh, not, I think Rob's played a, a very very good game here, but I think obviously looking at it in retrospect from outside a perspective with no pressure on me. Mm-hmm. If he's planning on making his last few actions just go to the middle row, it might have been better to get the grackle in the middle row earlier on. Right. Uh, and, you know. But he more, he, he yeah. was fighting for that. Uh, oh, the that, cup bird. That drawing, yeah, and and also fighting for the fighting for the end around goal here. That's right. Yeah. So we know that he's planning to play a bald eagle now that i think that what's going to make or break rob's game here is whether he can get the fortune of either mike giving him the worm. three more worms yeah. <laughs> right or or he gets the vulture so he needs you know either fish off the vulture yeah or worms in some combination to get him okay you know either three of anything or Two fish or some combination, and it it might happen because Mike did pick up birds and is looking to play two two birds in the bottom row with that grab. Presumably, if Mike's going for the bottom row, he wants to get two down, or else he probably won't play. But it it feels like an odd choice to draw cards if you didn't have an intention of playing them. Yes, presumably. If I was really sharp, I'd remember what other card he had because I think we saw him take another bird at some point in our life. But yeah. um, the mystery is alive for us. Well, just we're building suspense, of course. Ah, yes, this is all this is all intentional. <laughs> um, I think we we might have missed Mitch playing a couple of uh, uh, play, doing a double play in the middle row. Yeah. Um, so. Discard an egg. You know, one of the problems with playing, you know, those aren't high point value birds as their base points, right? So he spent three eggs to get four points. So, you know, that action in and of itself was only one, um, one point really, but it does, it does boost his middle row action. Um, and might affect his bonus cards as well, of course. True. True. Um, I mean, almost certainly it helps. Um, Now, talking end of game bonus while Maria lays eggs. There's going to be a lot of laying eggs here in the last few minutes, so we can chit chat. Although we'll see, because if Maria hits this, Rob might (laughs) have everything. There you go. Ah, and she Rob succeeds. gets it, oh, and Rob did Lord get the uh, wow. So R- Rob got this, okay. got the worm off of Mike's move, and Our now he's got a beautiful chance to reroll. I He needs <laughs> In my mind, either it or <laughs> to hit, and then he'll have enough to build that bald eagle. Is the bald eagle fish, fish, rat? I thought it was three fish. I think it's fish, fish, rat. I remember us talking about. 
without getting nine points for a uh, rat. Hey, dummy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Try. That gives him a lot of uh, gives him a lot of benefit there. Right. Uh, they, I mean, the odds of getting either of those than, goes up than some of the as when you have that flexibility. Just going for the fish. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, if even if he gets even if he whiffs completely and doesn't get the fish or the or the um, rat what about this? he still just needs one if more mike could still bail him out right yeah. so um and and we see him take a worm which yes. is <laughs> we are barely functioning okay <laughs> whoever well, wins this we shall see what happens there yeah that is a surprising I, that's a I very surprising move. The last days one is because like you got maybe he's nine, given up on the bald eagle you know um, could be maybe it's already been tucked complicated board games, you know. not to mention yeah somebody's got perhaps to, yeah although i will say yeah, if back to what i was saying they before do. if he doesn't yeah. have i don't think eagle, I, don't. I don't i didn't i mean i would oh, there's yeah, not much better he can do in the blue row they started an hour well we're about to find out it appears if his hand is where I think his hand is going. That's true, it's hovering. Maybe he has a fish out of the camera shot and we're foolish. Could be. Taking some eggs off. I know, who's smiling the biggest? Hmm. You have taken? He wanted to get into the predation game himself. Oh, there you go. So that is that that I believe is an eight pointer that predators. Yeah, it looks like I can't quite see what the bird is. It's Maybe an ibis, I believe, of some sort. An ibis, ibis, ibis. It's one of those words I never get right. The white face, the white faced ibis with eight points. <laughs> two, two worms, one fish. I don't. I know what I'm doing. Wait. And okay. yeah, so it's eight I mean, points. He doesn't have to yeah, worry awesome. about the. Like, I know what my three are. I got them. I'm not high. So here's my here's my thought. So I don't know if Rob has the bald eagle in his hand still, but yeah. if he did have the bald eagle in his hand, well, I guess his the hope is that if if he succeeds on that hunting ability at least yeah, once, he, he can get. Then he'll be fine. Exactly. But see, I'm a little. Hmm. It's interesting. I I still think. Because now his engine on the bottom row is five points with a, um, you know, somewhere between one and six or right. whatever the uh, one and six no, times all five I dice would be. Yeah. I'm not a probability guy, but, you know, it's somewhere less than an, just a hard one point, right? Domination. So if he could have played a, the tuck bird earlier the finch the beautiful uh i think that's a finch there in the middle with the red head um if he played that down there then he's guaranteed six right because tucking is a guaranteed point yeah so if he did that then all he would have needed to do would be to find a, a seven or eight point bird that goes into the one of the top two rows which there's got to be at least i don't know 10 15 16 cards left in the deck that would give him that benefit um, who knows? Who knows? So we don't know his bonus cards either. Yeah. So it, you also, know, that's another thing. I think we must know one of Mike's bonus cards because all he does is play the Franklin's Gall. So it must be the bonus card relating to names of a of a person. Because uh, Franklin's Gall is only worth three points. It's time. It's like 50 50. Or yeah. Well, and I, I don't know. I, I mean,. But I no, don't, it's obviously been a long day, but I don't know why Mike wouldn't, if Mike's planning to lay eggs a couple more times anyways, it. why would he not lay eggs a couple times and get resources so that he could play something and then Franklin Skull? Yeah. That's where my head would have gone, to play the, I think, the heron that he took. And then, yeah, you to know, be able to heron. Combo. Right. Oh, and uh, there we get to finally see Maria not in a still photo. She's in that's Mike's true. shot, Mike's camera angle. So that's that's the real life Maria there for everybody who's been dying to see her move. We uh, we have a jump cut as people take a break. I think we're getting back to it as uh, Rob takes uh, his action. That's why Maria and Mike are stretching their legs. Yeah. So Rob is um, trying to get points off of that newly placed ibis and, and he, he hits succeeds. it makes up the difference and, 
Yeah, so so turns out that I was uh you know, I was wrong. That well, I was I I like to think that I still had a point, but uh it pans out for him, let's say. It's true. And and also he has the a bit because he'd been drawing so many cards, right? The knowledge of his hand was a little bit in flux. I'm sure he was planning on that eagle play and then uh yeah, and then, and, and then he drew into the ibis and thought, well, this is more attainable immediately. So the question with the ibis is, you said it had a, did it have a color word in it? Is that? It, it uh, does have a white, yeah, the white-faced ibis. So there, maybe he's going for colors? Cause yeah, because he's also got the yellow-headed blackbird. He's got the red-headed something else. Yeah, and I think he's got... I think that first bird in his water row is also yeah. blue something, right? Or brown. Yeah. Or, yeah. So it might have pushed him over the edge there, whereas the bald eagle doesn't. So right. that could have been the case. And big surprise here, Mitch is going to lay some eggs. So, <laughs> so I, you in know, this economy? Mitch, yeah. I, obviously, Mitch didn't have every card in the deck to choose from. But, you know, Anna's Hummingbird there and the Sparrow that lets you just play an extra card. So playing the extra card, that's fine. But the Hummingbird doesn't net you any points, right? And yeah. and he's unlikely to want to – he doesn't need more resources because he has the Raven, right? So I don't – I would have – he would have preferred probably if he could have got – anything else right like the meadow lark that's out there or yeah. the bronze cowbird those would have netted him more points in the long run than that hummingbird yeah. um hummingbird is only he, worth four points on the card as well so he netted two points by playing it but that's not uh, a sizable gain especially when in the third row you can just get three points which is what he was yeah. at before playing his uh, his three birds so, I mean, if you look at, like we were saying, I, you know, okay, so best case scenario, I just slam 7 points, 7 points, 7 points, 7 points, get 35 in the last round, and then I go home and brag about it all day yeah. long. That doesn't always happen, but Mitch now has spent two of his actions in this last round, and he scored one point net on his first action. Yeah, and two, two points. points on his second one. And now, so now he's likely to get, now he can get rid of the food. Um, so he could lay five eggs. And then he has one card in his row that gets a sixth egg. So he can get six points for action for the next three actions, which is, so basically he's going to get, you know, 18 for these last three plus uh, two uh, and a one, so he's going to get 21 points in the third or in the last round. Yeah. That's, you know, so that's Mike now is now he knows the bar. He knows what you know Mitch is going to do. He knows how many points Mitch is going to have at the end of the game. So the question is, can Mike score more points for action? You know, to beat that. And so he's already played Franklin's goal, which was a two-point action with one of yeah. his actions. And he drew cards, which was a zero point action. So he needs to essentially, uh, if he wants to come out ahead of Mitch in this last round, he needs to outscore 18 points on his last three actions. So last two, because um, Mike went first this round. That is correct. Yes. Well, he already took one of lay eggs. Yeah. So that yeah, lay yeah. got him one, two, three. So he's getting five, six seven because he has the blackbird yeah uh so so you know what we're seeing here is mike is going to get seven points for the last three actions or yeah. well he already did seven on one and, and so he's going to get seven while mike or mitch is getting five um so that's looking like you know the advantage arrow is swinging towards mike a little bit here yeah, that's true. And also probably could be the benefit of drawing those cards, not only getting a keyword for a bonus card, but also getting enough cards to tuck and turn into eggs. Yeah, you're taking the slide once. Yeah, I, I mean, I like, uh, actually, Mike might run out of cards. Uh, yeah. Or does he have enough? Uh, I don't know how many cards he has. Yeah, let's all two, two, two more? Two more, right? Two more. Uh, I'm going to play. Oh, 
Or he'll play a bird. Oh, wow. I'm going to play a bird. So, okay. Is he comboing here? Can he Maybe do it with the Maybe he's dropping two has? birds on the bottom row. Okay. This is very so exciting. This should be the heron. No? Okay. No, just has it. I think he puts in a, a loon of some sort. Or the common merganser, I think. Yeah. yeah. The common merganser that he picked up a while ago. Yeah. Two hours ago. Yeah. We got that card was drawn. So, I mean, Mike is sitting in a great position, so I don't want to be too critical here, but I... I'm I'm still a little dubious on why he didn't drop Heron into one of those birds, and then get and then just, and then just take one more turn yeah. laying eggs, right? Because laying eggs is seven points, right? Uh, so if you take if you lay both of those, if you play both of those birds in one action, you get a whole extra action back uh, to lay eggs, right? And so even if I think what what I imagine is happening in Mike's head is he's he's wants to get his bonus cards right, and so yeah. if if he bumped one of those cards from like three to seven or from four to eight or something like that, that's a four point benefit, right? But by not playing the by not by taking two actions to get those four points or whatever, he's essentially losing a whole seven point action in the middle row. So now Mike does have two bonus cards. He's he's he was able to pick up bonus cards with that first bird in the forest area. So it could be that they both happen to chain together. Yeah. And I mean, we have imperfect information here, right? But yeah. there's a lot of math that goes into the last row and or last round. And you oftentimes need to think of all five moves and say, okay, I got five actions. How many points can I get off these five actions, right? Yeah. Is it is it just middle row, middle row, middle row, middle row? In Rob's case, bottom row, bottom row, bottom row. Bottom row. Um, you know, and you have to add in that the bonus cards, right? Because a, a four point bird might get you four extra points in your bonus card, so he becomes an eight point bird. Yeah, um, Rob is unsuccessful on his hunting because uh, he only had a one one in six shot because yep. there was only one fish uh, or one dice, rather. And it was like a month ago. Um, in the morning till, so like, Rob is going to score five points on this action. Doing like exactly <laughs> like this, where it was like four and on Saturday, they were all different, so it was like less draining. Now yeah. Rob does have the option since he is drawing four and then tucking cards. Mm -hmm. He has the chance so, to yeah, potentially find an eight-point bird, yeah, uh, that or nine-point bird that would give him a, a play that's. It's one or two points better than just going to the bottom row again. So he's got another shot here to potentially increase uh, by two points if he's able to play a bird um, in one of those top two rows. And especially because everybody's been so free with the food now and his hummingbird just throwing them out there. Did Mitch actually elect to use the hummingbird? I, I, think I would imagine. He, he did. I think he did. So it's a wild west here. Um, it's it's hour twelve of wingspan. Anything can happen. <laughs> yes, I, I, I guess my only, I, you know, hmm, I guess he doesn't want to lose the point from the raven. So that's so he doesn't want to activate that raven because he does lose a point um, there. Right. So that's probably what he's thinking of. And building to have his last play drop, maybe drop another bird into the water to tie for that lead. The end of round yeah. goal. Now, one thing I didn't consider, uh, I guess Mike's out of food. I was wondering if Mike's planning on going all five. And he drops the hair and, and something else and and ties the bonus. You know, maybe that's his angle here. But I don't think he has the food for that. I think we did just hear Mitchell say, I'm such an idiot for just giving away some food. I think he recognizes that he other people have gotten more value out of the food than... Uh, than he has. Yeah. I mean, he's ending the game with a pile of food, and while it is the tiebreaker, 
if you're giving people food, uh, like he I gave, can. essentially gave Rob the ability to play that Ibi Ibis without you can having to go to the top row, right? So you're, yeah. if you give the other players effectively a half an action or a third of an action, <laughs> yeah. uh, and all you're getting is a tiebreaker point, then that's um, that's a tough one to stomach, I think. Um, yeah, I I would say maybe maybe not wanting to activate that that hummingbird there. I'm going to lay eggs. Mike is laying some eggs here. He doesn't have the food because Mitchell didn't uh, activate that this right. time. He spent it on getting that common merganser out. I'm going to tuck a card. Put He's probably egg. tucking that heron that I am yep. uh, I also don't want to give everybody sad the heron didn't like see the light of day, but we, uh, we Mike's going to flip over two bonus cards to make me feel foolish, and yeah. I'll have to eat crow. <laughs> eat Mike's fish crow. Yes, yes. Big surprise, desperation laying eggs. Maria is desperation laying eggs, which is... Let's see, let's see if that owl hits. That'll be lovely, a lovely parting gift for Rob if he's managed to, to luck into something nice. Well, Rob has certainly drawn the most cards this game. So yeah. um, as, uh, as most of our players were talking about Magic the Gathering earlier, I know that Magic the Gathering players love drawing cards. Um, yeah. So that is a fact. Oh, there was another one right there. Can I roll this one? Is that okay? Sorry about that. No, absolutely. We won't beat up on you about dice okay. rolling at a kid or anything. Mike, it doesn't I think that's hit. a callback to when they were beating up on her a, a couple hours ago about yeah. dice rolling at a kid. So. So let's see. The the owl has succeeded four times out of maybe seven or eight tries. So yeah. close to fifty fifty. Not the worst I've seen the owl do um, for Maria there. Um, as we get into the final scoring, uh, Rob is going to hopefully gonna drop play a bird. eight pointer. But we'll see what how good this bird is for Rob. I it's I can't remember what he took because he's been drawing four he's cards on the deck so for three cards. rounds. Yeah. It's a padded table. Ah, uh, now this no, no, no. could be <laughs> a, more than seven points. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's going to be exactly seven, so he gets the four point value of the bird plus uh, laying four eggs on his nests of that type. It yeah. should lay on its cell. Actually, sorry, it lays on its cell. Oh no, he counted that. Okay. Yeah. So seven point play there, uh, which is not bad. Um, better than what his bottom row would have given him. Yes. And that is it for Rob. So Rob is going to have to throw himself to the gods of scoring here. You just want to be on that side before I put the cube down? Sure. Oh, Mitch is getting the, the pre-scoring handshake here. So I, at the beginning of round four, Chris, I was leaning towards Mitch, but yeah. I, there's too many large numbers on Mike's uh, board. I yeah. like his position, and I think Rob, Rob's got a, some strong plays as well. A lot of tucked cards, so. And you see, Rob really, shuffling think, his two bonus cards there yeah. too. <laughs> and and with with two bonus cards in front of uh, Mike and Rob. Yeah. It's really anyone's game. I mean, those two bonus cards could be 20 points, or it could be six points, or it could be zero points. Uh, yeah. You know, it could be anything. Uh, it could even be a boat. But um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. So, as far as the uh, my favorite birds, I think that I always like to pick which flock I think is you know the prettiest, and yeah. I would, it might be. It might be Mitch's. I like the, you know, the hummingbird is nice, and that, yeah. that blue jay he's got is pretty, uh, pretty attractive as well. I really do. I mean, I do like Mike's. Uh, I love that blue jay, the the eastern or Eurasian blue blue jay. I forget what it's called. And then the the poster child, you get points for the poster child. True. And well, in the bush tit though, uh, I forgot We're going he's for also scoring, got that. Though. Maria's scoring her oh, yeah. her birds right now. 27, I heard, something like that. 27 on birds. Yeah, 
43. 43 Rob. is formidable on birds. Thirty five for Mitchell, not that bad. So he's he's eight behind Rob right now, but he has a few extra Seven. eggs. Uh, 15, 21, 25. Uh, twenty five plus twelve is thirty-seven. Uh, 40, 51. Fifty one is wow. even more formidable. Yeah, that's uh that is a good bird score. Um Mitch double checking. So so Rob's got to make up eight points here. Um, but Rob does have those tucked cards. So here's we'll the see. bonus cards. Um, I've got one for birds with four eggs on them, so I have three points from that. And that is another. That's a tough one to get max points on. Um, birds named after a person. Bells. That's two points. Yep. And then I have birds with a power, which is just this guy. So four points total, unfortunately. Not a lot in those bonus cards. Yes, that that hurts. So Mitch, Mitch gets three, Rob gets four. Not... Random, I have not one, great. Two, three, four, five, six for twelve. Ooh. Ooh. I also have birds with an egg laid on them. I yeah. have ten, so six, so I get eighteen. Wow. Oh, we didn't What was that first one that was eating, eating the wild? No. Was yeah, that what it was? Wild. Two per wild? Two per wild, and he managed to scoop up twelve points in that. So that so those those the goal and the Merganser were both two extra points on top of themselves. Yeah. So uh, not bad. Hey, look. Makes makes us eat the crow, uh, as we said. So the purple first has zero and one, and two is three, and zero is three. Three total points for wow. Maria for end of round goals. Blue, okay. Zero and zero, and three and seven is ten. Ten and points ten. for Rob. Red. This is Red's red favorite category. Red is two, seven. So five and six is eleven and four is fifteen. Okay, 15, fifteen, pretty good. So Mitch will probably get the most out of that. Two, four, seven, eight, seven, and it looks like three, green is going to have five, 15? six, seven. Okay, sorry. Is that right? Yeah, I'm yeah. still just okay. so not used to the halvesy thing that okay. I have to think. Ten plus three plus. I get three points. No, yep. you get, yeah, just you double get checking. Yeah. Again, a long day. So, Mitch does have a lot of eggs here, but it is um, a lot of points to make up when when Mike gets 51 on bird cards. That's tough. And eight points in end of round goals for Mike too. Pretty yeah. good. 18 points in bonus cards. That feels hard to surmount. 20 points for eggs for bonus Maria. points. Wow. Yeah. That is, yes. Unfortunately, some of those bonus cards are not built like the others. 24 and eggs for Mitchell. 24 eggs is not bad. It's going to be real close. I think it's very close. It's going to be within five points. Where you've got four foods over there? Four rats from her hunting efforts. Watch it come down to the tiebreaker. One. I got one. Everyone's saying how close it is. Yeah. And tuck cards. This is Rob's category, so I. Rob will have a good solid number of tuck cards, but with with the bonus cards as rough as they were for Rob, I don't know if it's yeah. going to be enough to to come back here. Twelve. Oh, plus a couple more. Yeah, a couple more in the middle row. Are they really waiting on us? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
17. 17 total. 17. That's 17 pretty good. Shots. <laughs> yeah. You're ready for your speech? I do, actually, but she's going to screech out. Unless there's a speech for last place. She's going to be my least favorite. Well, we were joking earlier about the fact that she was like, I want your speech. Mike, do you have trick cards? I have two. Two. All right. So, 27 plus 60 something from Maria. Okay. Not having that in I'm curious to see if Mike is adding it up in his head as uh, in advance as some yeah. of us did last year to to ruin the surprise. <laughs> whoa, 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 start over. Let okay. <laughs> me do me wrong. I'm totally down with 147, but uh... Mike got 147 by the first count, so that's very good. And we see the clap from Mike. Yeah, right. by my count, yeah, it's, very much for a it's very close oh, between crap. Mike and Rob. But I, I have Mike at 90. I have Rob around uh, 84, but I might have missed a couple in there. He, he might have been anywhere between 84 and 89, but it's not enough to hit that 90 number. It's Mike who, with that huge wow. bonus card play and the enormous amount of birds, 51 points in birds, that takes it home and takes home and becomes the 2023 wingspan champion congratulations goes to mike tobzuski that was a wild game jeff that was that, that had a lot of twists and turns um you know it's it's always exciting when it comes down to the to the end game bonuses i mean if you think if rob had the two per tucked bird, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and got 12 points off that, then, then Rob would be wearing the ring right now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's tough. I think there was a, uh, pretty, tr pretty tough start for Maria. Didn't get any cheap birds to play. Yeah. So that, that was too bad for her. Um, I think Rob played his bottom row engine, uh, pretty well about as well as, as he could have. Yeah. Um, it, the bonus cards didn't land his way. And then I think Mitch was maybe one or two more good birds uh, in that middle row. If he could get his engine to make in seven instead of five, that could have made the difference yeah. there. I don't know what his final score was. Uh, yeah, Mitch, Mitch's was around 79, according to my count. So so not like okay. not too far off. 11 points from the from the lead still comes in third. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but, just, yeah, I it's, mean, it's those little efficiencies and those that 18 points in bonus cards is really hard to overcome. Yeah. And I mean, I think Mike, uh, I mean, he played high point value birds yep. and and, um, you know, it's pretty hard to beat 51. I mean, he had 51 on cards and 18 on his end game bonus. That's that's Maria's score in just yeah. two scoring categories right there, you know? So yeah. that's, uh, that's an impressive feat and uh, really good game by Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good game by Mike. Uh, but it could have gone, could have gone anyone's way. So for all those out there who are thinking, Hey, I could have been a little bit more efficient. Well, you can take on wingspan in the world series of board gaming next year. Make sure to get your tickets now uh, be or before April 1st, you can cash in on that code. I am in to get you some money off. You won't be facing Jeff Jeff's in great Western trail. And yes. we, we heard that Mike, uh, Mike said if he didn't win the whole thing, he may not be back because he, he's on his honeymoon and he didn't know if he could justify it. So I don't know if, if Mike will be able to, to come and defend his ring or not, or it might be wide open for a new champion. Wide open wings fan. Yeah, it's uh, it's anybody's game. So uh, go uh, go home, get your flashcards, memorize all 190 <laughs> birds and uh, and be ready for next year's competition. So that's true. Go out in nature, study their environment, study their behaviors, embody that and get ready. Uh, Jeff, thanks so much for jumping on board and uh, commentating. This was super fun. And for those of you who want to check out Jeff, go check out his YouTube, go, go subscribe right now to Meeple Maven.
The handle is yeah, right below his face. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Chris. I can't wait for the next opportunity to, to go through and watch some videos with you. Yeah, this was super fun. Uh, stay tuned again to the Dice Tower for everything WSBG, all the coverage, all the ring finals that still have yet to be released. We're releasing them every Saturday to bring you top of the line board gaming and uh, elevating our game just that much further. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. Thanks.